cold. Groaning like a geezer. Everybody, I almost didn't get that out. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Gray Beards Studio. This is the hottest and the coolest and the bestest draw stream on the interwebs. Thank you for joining us today. We are celebrating the uh, iconic, the legendary fantasy artist Frank Frazetta's birthday is tomorrow, or at least so I've been told. So uh, that's why we didn't do a poll this week because I already made up my mind as arbitrator of the show, arbiter of the show, excuse me, that uh, we were going to do for Zeta. So uh, let's uh, bring in my co-hosties and uh, see what they've all got up their sleeves today. First of all, welcome the guy who brings you Bass Reeves, uh, David Williams. Got a little color art right there. That's uh, from the last couple of weeks. Conan, the barbarian, and his Doctor Strange from... Uh, a week ago, I think he has something else he's going to share with us shortly better. Uh, let's also bring in the, uh, the the man that some people mistake for the skunk ape, some people uh, Sasquatch, but he's really Kelsey Shannon. There he is. I, I don't think you should be the arbitrator because you. this is yeah. why you always win. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was thinking of something else that I won't get into right now when I said arbitrator. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 All right. So, gentlemen, uh, today today is Frazetta, and any day you do Frazetta is a good day, I think. But um, let me do a let me do a quick run through the uh, chat, and then we'll get going here. Uh, leg kick is here because leg kick is almost always here. Green Laser says I'll have to miss this one as I'll be at the eye doctor. Well, if you're not if you can't see, you couldn't watch the show anyway. So Get your priority streak. Yeah, <laughs> get your eyes fixed and then come back and watch the show. Joe Bernardo, all the way from Las Vegas, is here. Uh, Blackjack, oh. H is for heretic. He says, uh, hello, Aaron. Hello, Kelsey. Hello, David. I ain't drawn no Star Trek Williams. Uh, oh, I guess that's uh, David's new nickname. All righty. Pregnant Joker's here. Aaron, please draw a death dealer. I already, I, you know, I drew him in a, a sketch earlier, so I'm not doing death dealer, but I think you'll like what I'm going to do. I will share the death dealer piece with you if you haven't seen it, though. Um, Shadow's Pawn is here. Um, and he likes to, he's reaching out to me and saying, thanks for taking care of my shirt size change, Aaron. That's what I'm here for, Shadows, is for you. Uh, Marcus Killigrew is here. Henry Jeremick. Uh, sequential Treasures, of course. James is always here. Uh, bring on the old guys, he says. Um, <laughs> oh, look at this. Everybody's got their hopes up. Right on, bro. I'm hoping that someone will draw Dark Wolf from Fire and Ice and possibly Death Dealer. Look at that. They're oh. they're trying to push us. Uh, Squeaky says, nice things about calling in sick today as I get to catch the show for once. Look at that. Skipping school so she can watch this show. Thanks, Squeaky. Atta, girl. It. Um, iodine 74 to quote the Lion King, it is time. Citizen Ronan is here, Blackjack, of course. Is that Kelsey 10 years from now? Who the guy with the <laughs> beard at the beginning? Maybe no, I think it may be the Sasquatch guy at the end. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, that that's that's the, the most the recent vulnerable. sighting we've had of Kelsey was that, that big <laughs> snow beast there at the end. Um, Bill Weist is here. Paul Taylor, our resident biologist, is joining us. That's great. Um, still only 35 cents. Amanda B. Uh, hey, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Ronan, one slick dude. Tarks, nine all the way from Canada. Dan, the pizza man Genovese is here. Uh, suicidal Tendencies, of course, is joining us. Christina Lynn. Christina Lynn, who is, of course, a freelance editor and proofreader who's worked on Wraith of God, among other things, and uh, will be working on Wraith of God Bloodhunters. Uh, Christopher John. My goodness, look at all these people. They're talking oh, to each other. Grievier Enterprises. Uh, what was that? Do, 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 do. Rudy Jade, 90. 
Fane Low Life. <laughs> Some of the best names in the business. Right? Kevin Thomas, <laughs> Caleb Reynolds, Custom God is here. How about that? All right. Ooh. So let's take a look at some artwork uh, from last week. Uh, David is, I don't know what David's doing, but let's start with Kelsey. We'll end with David because David had the farthest to go to get a completed <laughs> piece. So we'll save him for last. Kelsey, I'm going to blow you up. I, You're however, well. finished uh, early. Uh, <laughs> did, you more than that, enough time to rub it into everybody else. <laughs> wait a minute. Did you doctor that up at all? Or is yeah. that... Is it, huh? Oh, well, maybe. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I see some a little the splatter video. action going. Uh, maybe. Yes. I think I did that on camera. You'll have to go back to the video and see. I think maybe it's the same. <laughs> Dude, you got paint on your fingers, which means that's still wet. Yep. You just messed around with it. That's what's going on. <laughs> I got paint on my finger. No, that's a cut. I cut myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, I did. I got a paper cut while I was put. I When I got Keon's artwork, you know, the werewolf piece he did for my cover, yeah. And I got the original and I was framing it and I had the, the mat and everything. And I, 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 I cut my finger like a paper cut kind of on the edge of the mat, but it wasn't bleeding. So I thought I just scratched it. So mm. then I had all the stuff. I put it together and I get the frame together and I look and there's blood all over the mat. I didn't oh. know Dale added red to this. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, what the, so I had to go in and mix up acrylic paint that matched the mat and went in and touched up the blood spot so I could use oh, the mat. No. Oh, uh. Anyway. All right. Now, okay, so that's your finished, finished piece from last week. Yeah. Now, I want to see what you got underneath that. And I don't mean like your clothes. I mean underneath that drawing. Uh, <laughs> well, you got to explain how you're going to show this first. Okay, I'll explain. Okay, okay. So David and I, I've been I've been uh, chasing a very particular thing with my watercolor stuff. Is that I want to I want to do something eventually that looks like comic books where it has the flat color and I want to try to achieve that by hand. And I was talking to David about this a little bit earlier about some techniques I've been messing with. And like, um, and I did this uh, the other day to try to see if I can capture like the absolute flat color. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot has to do with the uh, paper quality, probably paint quality. I don't know. But um, if I zoom in, you can see I did get pretty close on some of this. I mean, this is pretty mm -hmm. flat. Uh, and then trying to cut in shapes with it is is kind of tricky, but it's doable. I think because I was doing it so small, it's uh, a little bloopy. I could probably get these shapes a lot sharper if it was a bigger image. But then some colors, you can see how they get a little blotchy. But, you know, it's not bad. You can still see the artist's hand in there, which I think is important these days. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's not necessarily get absolute mechanical flat color. Mm -hmm. uh, and this might be as close as I can get anyway, but... What, uh, do, what are you using? Uh, this is uh, these uh, gouache set. Uh, okay, like it's the gouache. Okay. Yeah, so it's not necessarily watercolor. I think I might have done like some very basic watercolor underneath, like the skin tone here or, you know, his blue skin. Oh, that's the other thing I was trying to do. I don't have it on me, but there was um, a Batman animated adventures issue that Lee Luridge had colored. And there was a shot of Joker. Um, and I forget who the artist was, uh, Bo Hampton, maybe. That, but the the color, uh, I tried to mimic exactly what I was seeing in the Batman adventure. And I got fairly close with just mm -hmm. the base. Uh, where's my watercolor set? You've seen it a hundred times, my little cake watercolor set. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I did, uh, the, I did the base colors with just this. I just used purple. Um, so most of it is this. And then for the colors, I couldn't manage. And I, I messed up the hands. Uh, so I went in with gouache. And that's why they look uh, bloopy. I haven't finished them, actually. So uh, this is just an experiment, just a sketch. But, the way uh, you did those hands, um, it reminds me of Mark Chiarello. And we were talking about him earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love his watercolor style. Uh, but it's very watercolor. And, like, I, he did this. I have a poster of a Mignola, a Mignola image that um, of uh, Cable and Wolverine. And I was looking at it up close one day, and I noticed that it was colored by hand. And it has the, uh, this bright yellow back, uh, background that is absolutely flat. No, There's no paint swabs. And so mm -hmm. I, I couldn't figure out how I did it, but I knew it was possible. Because uh, when you look at that old stuff, it's flat or, or it's mm -hmm. painterly. It kind of just depends on what you're doing. But like, I want right. to learn how to do it. 
So here's the other color set I got, which is like this uh, gouache set. And uh, so you went, with the, you went with the gouache because it's opaque and you figure you probably could get a flatter, more even. Yeah, a little bit. I think most of, this, most of this might be this watercolor set, um, but this I was doing with the gouache and I, I kind of dug some of the opaque qualities of it. So I wanted to experiment more with it. Um, I may be doing that today. Uh, but I, I want to chase that watercolor look of uh, Frazetta's today. So uh, I may just end up using this. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, some people wanted to know what that horse's name was again that you drew last week. Oh, 3030 from uh, Marshall Bravestar. There you go. All right. Well, uh, that's a cool Joker piece, man. And that, that horse, actually, some people in the chat are claiming you you worked on the horse. So Bill Weist is saying, looks like he touched that up, but it looks great. So, I don't know. Uh, it's all on video, so you can go back and check. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't remember. I've been pretty busy this week. So, <laughs> uh, Marcus possible. says, how about one of those hot, big bottom Frazetta girls? Um, that's a possibility. Kelsey's been mm. threatening stuff like that. Uh, I've been all threatening week. you with big booty for Zeta girls. Yes. Well, no, you can do the booty. You just can't do any frontal nudity. I think if you do like, if you did like booty nudity, that would be okay. I had an idea, he's but I, I don't know if I'm he's turning the booty into in Nipsey Rowe. Nipsey <laughs> 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 Russell, kidding me. All right, let's switch over to David and see what he's got for us. Um, did you do more work on that Conan thing? Of course not. Uh, yeah. oh, you can <laughs> Dude, you're know. pixelating again. I'm. What is wrong with your internet? What is wrong with New Mexico? That's the bigger question. You hear the rain? It's raining here. I know. It's, is it, it still? Like, is it still pixelating? Well, you're kind of blurry. Like uh, still slowly clearing up. Here, let me let me let me uh, let me mess around here. Okay, that's better. Okay, that's better. All right. Well, let me go into. Okay, that's better. I think. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> now. I have to admit, uh, I didn't finish. No. Oh, so, this is all you're getting. No, just I, I, I really didn't, but I wanted to. But I, I was having feeling. problems with uh, some of the watercolors. So trying to layer certain things. Oh, so you okay, right. So you haven't like finished the flesh tones and stuff yet. You're still you Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm still trying to figure some of this stuff out and I wanted to try out um, uh, I bought a set of Doc Martin uh, paints because I, yeah. I like some of the vibrancy that you know mm -hmm. Kelsey was getting, and uh, Gary Martin uh, did a sketch in my wife's sketchbook years and years ago, and it was so nice. And he got he made the colors go flat, like what we were talking about in certain areas, and he even got some kind of inking techniques in it. And that I was going to try to work in some of that with uh getting some of that hard animation line to yeah, keep the yeah. integrity of the animation thing going so, but so you're, using, painter. you're okay. using a violet there kind of as an underpainting right which is yeah. sort of that's kind of a rockwell thing rockwell sort of he used a mars red for his underpainting which is kind mm. of a, a violet sort of uh base color that that, that works really well with flesh tones and gives you uh can give you even if you're varying the flesh tones it's a great underpainting for flesh tones so what do you go in after that with like a or like a yellow or an orange or something i wouldn't go in with yellow you always end up looking jaundiced i would go mm -hmm. i'm always i'm always partial we got the blue background i would go in with orange can and you do an orange blue complementary right yeah uh, but i what color is that the chick in the blue uh what is she she's like a she's like this color but i gotta deepen this color as um his fur or whatever is even darker than this yeah and okay. then i have to make it pop from his color too right which is another shade of like a grayish brown so i'm mm -hmm. going to knock him back into like a kind of almost green thing to push him back and to right. pop him forward and to pop yep. her even more forward right okay as they're saying she's tan yeah um yeah, that's a pretty complicated piece to be like experimenting with the uh, paints yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, hey, go for broke, man. If you're gonna do something, do it well. So that's right. what I'm. That's what I'm trying to do. So I was just like, you know what? I, I bit off more than I could chew. You know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but that's well, how you learn, yeah. man. You we, learn we like to call that no, no, around here. We like to call that cheating. Um, uh -huh. Because now it's gonna be two weeks before we see the finished piece of this. So, it's not. Uh, we're not cheating. Remember. That's See, right. now I'm Nipsey Russell. <laughs> yeah, you're only competing with time. That's it. <laughs> I know. And we're all running out of that pretty quick. So. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
<laughs> nah, it's right. a good Sorry, start, guys. man. I hope all you right. keep going with it, though, because I want to see that finished. Yeah, so do oh, I. Sure. I really want to see all those flesh turns come out. But, um, uh, okay, so I'm going to take center stage here just for a minute and show a couple of things. Um, Did now, you color that piece? No, I didn't get around. I was gone this weekend because I was at a show, so I didn't get a chance to color it. But um, I still might. Although I, I keep getting random offers on it as a black and white piece. So I'm kind of like, eh, maybe I'll just leave it alone. But That's true. You probably should just leave it black and white. I saw a lot of those comments. I, I have to admit, they might be right because it is pretty sweet. Um, no, they're wrong. They're wrong. Now, yeah, he wants you to mess it up. <laughs> you, guys, you guys will notice that I'm still getting some banding at the top because, yes, I ordered a new camera, but it's not here yet. So you have to suffer through with me. And it I doesn't apologize. look bad, though. It doesn't no, look it bad. Fine. It'll get worse though. It does this to me all the time. It's like I turn it on. It's like, hey, it's fixed. And then like ten minutes later, it's like it's not fixed. Yeah, um, honestly, warm. Aaron, do not color that piece. In me being all, in all honesty, that's okay. Some yeah, listen really to great, chat too. If, it's some I really do. great inking on that. It all is. Right, it's a sweet you. piece. All right, we'll leave it black and white. But here's what I did last night that you guys might enjoy a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 you know why I like that so much is because the Flintstones did a smoking commercial that I <laughs> yeah they did I know they're so that's why I did it it was like people are going to be offended and I'm like you know what they did they were pushing cigarettes man back in the early sixties the Flintstones were gosh that's fantastic it was like Bar was it Barney and Fred smoking behind the house yeah and, and, and making, Wilma and Betty were mowing the lawn while they were smoking yep, yep that's while <laughs> while they were getting us getting us smoke it was awesome. <laughs> Hey, Bearwolf13 says, great tattoo piece. I agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That is great. Is that just pencil? Uh, there's a little bit of marker in there in the gray. Uh, okay. Travis Perrick for $2. Thank you, Travis. How did the show go double A, A, Ron? Uh, it was great because it was an old style comic book show. There was nothing there but old comic book dealers. And uh, so I made some money in the morning that I went and spent nice. it in the afternoon. Hey, a pregnant, books. pregnant Joker says Winston's, and I'm, I'm thinking, no, it's Winstones. Right? <laughs> 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 Kevin Thomas says, now that is art. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, now I wanted to show Kelsey a couple things, or actually David as well, in, in the chat. Now these are these are some Freda, Frazetta inspired pieces from my sketchbook from like 2000. So it's like 20 oh. some years ago that I wanted to turn into pieces and I haven't. I'm not going to do it today, but oh. this is the kind of, you know, like uh, buttography that you're welcome to do <laughs> on the show. If, uh, this is actually probably as much rights and inspired as it is a Frazetta inspired. But now this piece here is a Frazetta piece. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, it never made sense to me. Why is there a naked girl hiding in the woods from a werewolf? But hey, you know. Well, Whatever. What else? Where else would you hide? Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> nah, so, so we could do some side boob too, as well. Yeah, this, this is okay. Clear. I just think frontal nudity might get me in trouble, but uh, I think this is okay. This is PG thirteen, right? And look at that. Sure. That's a tooth drawing from two thousand of oh, right God. Great. That shows how old wow. the concept is. That's great. So, anyway, so there's a couple little Frazetta inspired pieces to get us uh, rolling. Um, okay, so I got to ask you guys, uh, David. We'll start with you. What are you doing today? Uh, Johnny Comet. Johnny Comet. All right, Kelsey, have you made up your mind? Yeah, and it's so funny because what I had in my head, I totally forgot about Fire and Ice, and uh, they were mentioning um, uh, Wolf. What's his name uh, from Fire and Ice? The Dark guy Wolf. Dark, Dark Wolf. wolf. I think. Yeah. And what I had in my mind was like a female Dark Wolf. Uh, and I, I, I just had that in my head. I never really considered, I forgot about fire and ice entirely. So now I don't know, you know, I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to stick with what I had in my head. Cause it just seems like if I could pull it off, it'd be a really neat image, but now everybody's getting me thinking about doing some bootay. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta listen to the chat. I mean, um, <laughs> I got a, I just got a notification. So I don't know if this is going to help anybody because but if uh, there apparently seems to be some problem with this streaming on Facebook. So if you're having trouble on mm. Facebook, come over to YouTube and check us out on YouTube. You just look up Greybeard Studio or Aaron Lopresti on YouTube and it'll come up. Um, 
but if you're on YouTube, you shouldn't be having any trouble. So there we go. Um, I'm going to go because I keep putting Edgar Rice Burroughs up and no one votes for it. <laughs> I'm doing Edgar Rice Burroughs anyway because Frazetta did a ton of stuff. So I'm going to do a Deja Thoris white ape piece. Oh, Ooh. very cool. So, um, I'm finally going to get that out of my system. And then I won't hey, have to Aaron, keep putting it in the poll. Aaron, I sent you yep. like a, a, a link to this uh, Johnny Comet um, collected edition book so you can show the cover of who I'm drawing. Where did you but send I have it? A, uh, it's in the uh, Instagram. Okay. <clears throat> I will. Uh... Now, from what, what I heard is that Johnny Comet is basically Frazetta himself. Mm. So you, it, now, now not only do you got to draw a cool piece, you got to draw Frazetta. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm basically, you know, doing a Frazetta, you know, a style thing, but I'm trying to make it look like him. But also uh, Johnny Comet, uh, Dave Stevens ripped uh, this liberally, you know, so where he he took like uh, the inking technique, and he there also took see oh, that yeah. girl's outfit, the blonde chick. That's Betty Page's outfit oh, yeah. in the yeah. Rocketeer. You're yeah. right, <laughs> and Dude, that's exactly it. <laughs> and basically, the Rocketeer Cl Cliff Secord is basically Dave Stevens' idea of himself. Right. Uh, sure. Yeah. So he's just doing Frazetta. He's doing Johnny Comet as the Rocketeer, right? Yeah, it's the same type of thing, right? Well, he's doing Dave Stevens as Johnny Comet as the Rocketeer. Yes, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, Travis Paracord for $5 says, Fire and Ice. Kelsey, how about a Thomas Kincaid background? Oh, yeah. Is that a, <laughs> yeah I'll just whip that out like Thomas did. I'll get somebody else to do it and then put some bloops of paint on there and sign it. <clears throat> Boom. Yeah, uh, uh, still only 35 cents says, what about Frazetta's Vampirella cover? Dude, anything that Frazetta worked on is open game, which and there's a lot of material out there. So, um, You know who else worked on Fire and Ice? Um, uh, the guy, I can't remember his name all of a sudden, but the guy that did Dinotopia also did backgrounds along with. Oh, him. really? Oh, did yeah. he really? He's wow. got a YouTube, a great YouTube James channel, Gurney. By the way. James, James Gurney. Gurney, yes. He's a night. He's the nicest guy in the world, man. I met him at at um, uh, one of those Spectrum shows in Kansas City, Ooh. and he just comes up and starts talking to you like you've been friends for years, you know. And oh, he was just great. super nice guy, super nice guy. I was able to pick his brain a little bit. Yeah, he um, seems great. Uh, go subscribe to his YouTube. He, he's lots of paint and techniques, and I've learned a lot watching him. He's yeah. so good. Yeah. I got a couple of his books. His Light and Shadow book is really good. He goes above and beyond because he does neat stuff where he'll make weird little maquettes of his logo that are like moving, you know, and, and cutouts and just, he seems like he just has fun making things, you know, yeah. just whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like a, an old school, kind of like a Michelangelo type guy who's like doing all sorts of stuff, you know, it's not just yeah. drawing or painting. He's classical, yeah. classical artist, but thank goodness some of these guys want to paint something cool and not just bowls of fruit, you know, like, yeah. Thank goodness for a Frazetta and a James Gurney and those types. <laughs> well, you know, that's the funny thing. I see like on Instagram, I see a lot of very talented artists, but they're drawing stuff that is a like, it's like they're like drawing stuff to show you how well they can draw, but they're not drawing anything that's interesting. Mm, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Wow. You know, look at this lady nursing her baby. I'm like, yeah, okay, but why, am I going to hang that on my wall? You know, it's just like, it's really nicely done, but... Blackjack says, before he was famous, Thomas Cade used to set up a table in front of Michael's in Fullerton, California, and try to sell his paintings. Oh, <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. That's great. And Bill Weiss said, uh, Gurney and uh, Kincaid used to, uh, went on a road trip together, hopping trains and doing live sketching. How great is that? You know, this sounds like Emperor of the North or something, like some kind of movie. I think he's I think he's conflating real life with some movie he saw. <laughs> they were a couple, yeah, Gurney and uh, Kincaid were a couple of hobos, and they, they took over this train and threw her Ornersborg night off the train, and then they started painting. You're like, wait a minute, that's not right. 
Uh, All right. So here's the question of, uh, well, actually, David, you had a question for me that we were going to save to start this. And uh, Kelsey can get in on this as well. Do hmm. uh, you remember what you asked me last night? If I could have my choice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, <clears throat> if you had your choice of <clears throat> either one or the other of the best Bernie Wrightson piece or the best Frazetta piece, what who would you who would you pick? And you can only pick one. That's that's brutal because um Frazetta was my first love, but Wrightson was probably my biggest influence overall. Mm. But I did give that some thought. And uh, let me pull up the image because um, I, as I told you last night, I think the, um, the ultimate thing for me would be coming back to which one's ultimately worth more as an investment. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> and uh, although I would imagine some of that Frankenstein stuff is pretty freaking valuable. I don't yeah, know. Any, gosh, any, I don't know if any of rights and stuff has gone over a million dollars. And I know that for some of Frazetta's paintings are in that neighborhood now. Um, Golly, man. Yeah. I would bet Frazetta, but I, that, if if that uh, Frankenstein stuff's not in that range, I'd be disappointed. I think. <laughs> well, like that, right. like his wraparound cover and stuff would be, you would think. But here, here's a, um, you know, here's my favorite Frazetta painting. Maybe that's a better question because I would go with Frazetta ultimately. Mm. Um, but this is my all-time favorite Frazetta painting right here. Um, Oh, really? Wow. With the mammoth breaking through those trees. Mm -hmm. And it is a butt shot, but it's a butt shot of a guy. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but... You picked another one last night. It wasn't that one. No, no, no. It was this one. I told you it was the one with the mammoth with the guy coming. Uh, oh, I thought you the... said there was another one. Uh, okay. All right. I'll let you slide on that. <laughs> <laughs> Could have sworn it was another one. No, this is the book, the first, this is the first Edgar Rice Burroughs book I bought because of this Frazetta cover. I thought it was just so cool. And I love that guy's arm, you know, look how, look how delineated his elbow is in the yeah. vein there on his forearm, yeah. reaching back in his back muscles. It's just mm -hmm. a great, uh, powerful piece. And this was, this came on um, up for sale at, when, you guys remember, uh, and I, again, I brought this up to David last night, but when that uh, Frazetta gallery showing was like 20 years ago and it came out with that big hardcover uh, gallery book that had the woman up in the, the tree looking at the moon from, you know, from behind her. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, it, it was just a big gallery showing of Frazetta, but some of the stuff was for sale and some of it wasn't. This piece was for sale like 20 years ago for half a million. And mm. it was the most expensive piece in there and it didn't sell. But uh, I think the last I saw on this, if there's still a price tag on it, it was over a million. So um, I don't know how I could not. I got a poster of this hanging in my studio. I just don't know how I could pass this one up if I had the choice. Kelsey, do you have a uh, favorite for Zeta? Um, yeah, it's uh, I, I mentioned it on um, uh on a super fun Sunday uh, on Rich's channel last Sunday, we did a, a birthday special. We had Sarah Frazetta on and uh, we were talking about that. I did my uh, favorite. My favorite piece was uh, the, I think it's Buck Rogers cover and it has um, like a little silver spaceship with this big green guy. Oh, the on red planet behind it and the red. Yeah. Mars is like clearly behind them. I, I just, that has like been my favorite piece of all time from Frazetta for I don't know whatever reason, <laughs> but oh, it's a great it's a great piece. That's why oh, it's so good. I, I'm just it's very comic book centric. Um, you know, it's watercolor. I, I can look at it and kind of kind of see what's going on in there. Um, oh, this is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you're, starting to, you're starting to feel the pressure already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me share this. This is the piece that uh, Kelsey's talking about. If you guys have not mm, seen it, that's a fresh inspo. Oh, God, it's good. 
Yeah. When so, you get in close, uh, that looks like something you would do. I, I learned so mm -hmm. much from the leg muscles and the arm, the, all the tendons and stuff in the arms. It's the way the uh, the way that the the holster hangs off the belt. And I I, I got into uh, Al Williamson does that kind of stuff too, which I I love that old uh, sci-fi stylings. It's just so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, um everything about this piece is just so good yeah one of these sold somebody on this and it might again we might be talking 15 20 years ago but somebody bought one of these buck rogers covers from them when they went to the museum the frazetta museum and paid two hundred thousand dollars for it and that was that like i said it could have been as much as 15 to 20 years ago uh probably more like 15 years ago guy posted on comic art fans and uh, it wasn't this one, uh, but you got to imagine that if it was 200,000, then this, this has got to be half a million or more at this point. And that's just the black and white, right? Uh, I, if I had the money, you know, yeah. I would, it would be the one thing I would chase after. I'm like, you know, but see, yeah, I can't, I, should, I guess I should be quiet just in case I do get the money. They don't want to gouge me on the price because I'll pay whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like there's very few things. If you had a million dollars or if you had millions of dollars, right, you were like, you know, whoever, you know, Bezos or somebody. And it's like I, I just can't see myself dropping that kind of coin on anything except maybe art. Yeah. I wouldn't even buy like I wouldn't buy Action Comics number one. I would not spend three million dollars on a comic book, but I would on an original piece of art like this. I'd buy a piece of land and uh, you know a house first, and then whatever's left, I'd buy that piece. <laughs> right. Well, then you, then you got to have a house to hang the picture in, right? Exactly. Can't be on the street. Um, <laughs> Cullen says that uh, Egyptian Queen sold for over five million. Wow. Oh wow. How that's the one where Cleopatra's kind of leaning up against the pillar. We've all you guys know that one, right? That's, oh, it's yeah. classic. That's a that's a pretty that's like a long landscape kind of thing, right? Isn't that the one? No, 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 it's, no. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, it's now I gotta some, bring it up. Like, it's got some ghoulies. Uh, you guys are keeping me from drawing by digging this stuff up. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because I am prepared and I'm gonna kick butt today. <laughs> uh, let's bring this up though. So I'm sure most people know it, but um, we'll go ahead and show it anyway because it is wonderful, as most of this stuff is. Uh, okay, let's see where am I at. Got too many windows open now. Um, all right, there it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. I was thinking there was a little down there. around her, but it's a, a, a cheetah and a uh, like a Moor guy. What would that guy be? He looks Egyptian actually with that hat. Yeah, well, he's supposed to be. So would Egyptian. he be like? Oh, yeah, he would be like a. He does kind of look like Brand Mac Mornish, though. He doesn't, he, you know, kind of like barbarian esque. But he's yeah. got to be, it got to be part of the palace guard, if you will. Uh, Eric Boyd says Kelsey would just buy some swamp land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I, you know, I, I think about like where, you know, because um, just north of us, uh, towards uh, um, what's north of me. Uh, <laughs> Swamp? I don't know. More swamp? Kentucky? No, I forget the state right above me. Um, but even over in Mississippi, but as you go up to like uh, Kentucky, I guess it is Kentucky. Um, man, just some beautiful, you know, even up into like southern uh, Arkansas. Um, yeah, it's just farmland and uh, it's just real beautiful out there. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, I don't know. I'd like to spend some time, get to know some of the people. <laughs> See what could... You never know. You move in, and then it's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In the store. I, you know, I don't know how you'd spend some time in an area like that, but yeah, you, might, yeah, you want to make sure you know who your neighbors are before you get uh, too crazy. Um, but I guess that's anywhere. Uh, but I, a big enough more. piece of land where you don't have to worry about your neighbors—that'd be great. We were just talking about that too, right? Yeah, that's right, man. It's like. Uh, David's Dave, David's a big advocate of those. Uh, what are they called? Not bubble homes. What are they called? 
dome. Oh, we were talking dome, about the dome, dome dome or whatever. <laughs> Just getting the oh, community the, the like geodesic that. domes or whatever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, get a bunch of uh, you know artists to sort of form our own crotchety old neighborhood of dome homes. <laughs> Telling you. I'm kind of you know, the way. Watch each other's porches, you know, and. Uh, yep. Could you imagine that? That would be awesome. Dude, I'd never be home. I'd already be over at somebody else's studio watching what they were doing. <laughs> well, you, if you, seriously, dude, if you did that, you would have to, it'd be almost have to be like the studio. You know, you'd have to, we'd have to get a collective studio so we could all go draw because we'd always be over at everybody else's house looking to see what they're doing and never get anything done. So mm -hmm. we'd have to have a central location where we could all hang out. I love that. You were talking about rights, and I love all the photos of him uh, in his studio. And it's like kind of my my ideal studio, where it's like all windows and just green outside. Yes, and and it feels like you're outside, even though you're you know inside your studio. Uh, I just love that. This this one uh, person uh, went and got the dome houses because I was looking at all the different variant various ways. This one looked like the Hall of Justice. I was just like, this looks so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, I want this so bad. <laughs> and and just the price he paid for it, I was just like, man, <laughs> I could I could sell my house and buy like three of those things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a part of the uh, the allure of those is the that they're cheap. Uh same thing with like uh concrete homes and underground homes and like you put you invest in a little bit up front but they pay off in the long run like i always wanted one of those uh, uh underground homes like the half and half because yeah. mm -hmm. like your your electric bills go way down because it keeps it warm in the winter and and cool oh. in the summer are you talking well, a lot about of the dome sure. homes are like that they build oh, like yeah? the lower level underneath the ground and they have the dome part on top and sometimes they'll even put some of the landscape over the top of the main house, even though it has an un underground area. It's there's so many cool things about that. I was just <laughs> ah, and and some of these people who live in like tornado country oh, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, they build them because of that because their their houses don't get torn to shreds. You know, uh, the wind just goes right over them. Right, right over it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Um, you think they'd have more here in Louisiana with all the hurricanes, but I don't think I've seen a dome home. I've seen some triangle homes. <laughs> well, these people buy stuff like out there and they go off grid or whatever, and they don't mm -hmm. make a big fuss about it and stuff. They just do it. Yeah. Oh, Texas you know, here where, where yeah. I'm at, trying to fight some of those who are doing some uh, container homes. Oh, yeah. Business. Um, and uh, some of the businesses, like they've turned uh, containers into like restaurants and stuff, and also like a, a little shopping center, and they're all container built, and it's awesome. And they in the, in the, in the like container one, like those like the container, like the trucks, yeah, like the like the like the truck containers, like the the uh, containers that they're not abandoned now. Now some they're they're manufacturing them specifically for these things. And these people buy them for like about $5,000 and then they, you know, fix them themselves or they get someone else to fix it. And the total cost by the time they get their whole house or whatever and electricity and plumbing and all this, they're only paying about like $80,000 to live in this sustainable house or maybe 100000 at best, you know. <clears throat> Danky Frankie says, my buddy lived in the dome home at UCSB. That would be a University of California, Santa Barbara, I guess, which is Santa Barbara. Talk about a beautiful place. Looked mm. cool, but felt cheap inside, he says. Hmm. All in how well, you make it, fault. I guess. Yeah. No, yeah. Just, exactly. <laughs> Geek Avenger for $5. Thank you, Geek. Out of the skies of the Pacific Northwest comes the Geek Avenger. Hail Graybeards. Hail Chat. Hail Mods. He's he's hail. friends with everyone. Um, oh, my gosh. Eric Boyd says, can a home be built for a man with werewolf arms asking for a friend? He's referring to me, of course. <laughs> and um, this is what you get when you come after me. So, there you go, Eric. I'm going to have to wait for Sunday for that one. Um, he said, I want mine now. May I have another? <laughs> still, you gotta, Kelsey, 
Yeah. I got to tell you right now, that chick's booty needs to be a lot bigger. I know. You know? I know. It's hard because, like, when I start drawing a big booty, like, her legs come out, like, way too big. So, like, no, they're not. Though. Frizetta, you got it. The Frizetta fies, man. Yeah. Um, she she needs an Asius Africanus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Booty is um, Maximus. <laughs> Boyd, yes, my work here is done. Yep, you've. Uh... <laughs> All right. So I'm going super big hippie with Deja Forest here because I got to, and big calves. You got to have the big calves. <clears throat> yeah, well, she's she's pretty naturally stacked, uh, not just for Zeta drawing wise, but they she's always been drawn like vaboom. Well, you know what's kind of funny about these uh, these Edgar Rice Burroughs things, these Mars, especially the Mars ones. It's like everybody's naked if you read the books, and it's like, right? If you're John Carter, man, and you're fighting a bunch of Tharks, I'm girding up my loins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I am yeah. not going out there free hanging and, and just hoping for the best. That just shows you what a man he is. I guess he just uh, doesn't even bother him, right? That's how the Spartans did it. I mean, you wonder if that was. They, uh... I don't know that they did that. They had something there covering them, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, a cape. Yeah, a cape. <laughs> are, we, are we talking about Frank? Are we talking about Frank Miller's world or uh, actual uh, Spartans? No, nah, he actually like I think he added clothes and gave him like a like a I don't know like a speedo kind of, but I don't, I don't think they had that. Um, well, I guess he, I guess he did have him naked at a couple times in the in the book. I guess if you're going to go into battle like that, man, you have my respect. Or my fear. I, that, that's a guy I wouldn't go near. You know, like these naked guys running at you with swords. You're like, I'm going the other way, dude. <laughs> Maybe that's why they did it. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah. Watch their faces when we show up like this. <laughs> <laughs> Ten never... bucks says they just turn around and leave. <laughs> They'll never see this coming. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a hard angle to draw. Oh, look, he's complaining already. Um, I, I complain with every drawing I do. I'll have you know. <laughs> boot, <laughs> every boot, like boot. That. We're going to be saying that the whole time. It's like, make that booty bigger. Make it bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you better get that. Larry Stroman up in here to show I you. I know. Oh, yeah, Stroman knows what he's doing. Yeah, come on, Larry. Give me booty. some tips. <laughs> he's like, you like draw a booty, and then you make it bigger. That's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, and it's just bigger, bigger, bigger. All right. Yeah, Kelsey's girl was on that medicine. <laughs> no ass at all. No, no. <laughs> it's like, are you drawing a presented chick or a little boy? Come on, man. You're not drawing oh, damn. No. damn. He's not drawing Adam Hughes booties. That's right. Get the, we want the big booty. If you're yeah, going, you're not booty, even you're drawing a booty. Oh, you're drawing full frontal over there. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm going to put some clothes on her, or a little bit of covering. You know. That's what you say now. This is how We're... you always win. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you say I'm not drawing nudity, and then you whip out. It's know, not about winning. Time. It's about the camaraderie. There's no competition here, unless people want to, of course, single mine out. That's fine. It's being the best. I'm totally fine. <laughs> There's no competition here. When I get this booty right, you guys are <laughs> all doomed. Dude, at this point, it's if you get that booty right. <laughs> I did say if. <laughs> well, I thought you said when. I was like, I'm not convinced there is a when at this point. Uh, that's true. I might have said a uh, when, but uh, it's definitely an if. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm, trying to, you know, it's delicate. I remember this story about, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah, I know that. Mobius at a yeah. convention, and like he was, and he was, I think McFarlane's line or somebody's line went right in front of his table, and they just. I'm gonna, knew. I'm gonna, I gotta stop you right there. You know this story? I told you this story. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. Tell it. Can you and tell it? Because it, it wasn't McFarlane. Who? <laughs> <Well>, yeah. <laughs> was it you? Um, it <laughs> was no, no. I was at a show, <laughs> and. <clears throat> Uh, I was at San Diego Con, and this is when Rob and all of those guys were at the height of the image, you know, uh, fervor. Mm -hmm. And when I was going in to, you know, get to my seat, I'm walking through this crowd of 
a huge crowd and I go, oh, it's the image guys. But I look over to my left and Mobius is sitting like, like three or five tables down from them in the same row, mm. <clears throat> but no one's paying attention to him. <laughs> right. But the line was purely for Rob and all of those guys. And right. I, I immediately knew that it was Mobius and I just went through the crowd and I was, I was, I was thinking they were there for him, but they weren't. Mm. No one was there curious. for him. And so I go over and I was looking and, the crowd bumped the table while Mobius was drawing. I think he was just drawing for himself, not for someone else, which was mm. weird. And he goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're making me mess up on the hardest thing to draw in the world. And the fan looked at him and goes, well, what are you drawing? I'm drawing a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I so think the hardest thing the in the world for anybody, he says, the hardest thing in the world is drawing a woman. <laughs> well, the hardest thing in the world is maybe drawing a pretty woman, but uh, yeah. I, you know, my mom, and I've said this before that on various streams, my mom was like my biggest critic when I was growing up, when I was drawing women, because when you first start drawing, right, and you just start drawing guys, right, <laughs> superheroes and whatever, because, you know, that's what you know. And then you realize at some age, you know, you start, you know, and you realize you're girls start uh, becoming more important in your mind. And you're like, yeah, I got to start drawing chicks, man. And and so all your chicks look very masculine. Right. And it, it takes a while to sort of figure out the difference. My mom was always on my case, always on my case. <laughs> it looks like a man. He needs to be more mm. feminine. It's got to be prettier, blah, blah, blah. And, and woman. I give her a lot of credit for uh, helping me. Uh, develop my, uh, shall we say, my uh, skills as a oh. artiste for the uh, fairer sex. And um, and uh, so drawing women is easy for me now. The figure work is just easy. Faces are always hard because you always, you know, it's you really want to make a beautiful face all the time. And that's they're pretty you know, easy when you're just drawing them standing straight up and down. How about you draw them in, a, in an action pose and then talk to me? Dude, I am drawing a monkey, okay, along with this. <laughs> so you got to take your breaks where you can, right? Yeah. The monkey is giving me trouble. It's not the girl. What'd you call me? <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm an ape, I'll have you know. <laughs> I'm a skunk ape. He's a skunk ape. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is giving me fits. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, baby. This is one where I should have looked at it, probably. See, you've had a whole you've had the whole week to think about it. You know? I was, but like you know, the booty thing threw me for a loop because I had a whole other image in mind. Well, uh, see, but... once again, my uh, master plan worked her. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. Uh that I was it was first posed to me by um Joe Jesco. He's like, when you when you do draw Tharks or any of the, you know, like the white apes from they 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 have they have four arms, right? So he does he goes, Do you do double torso? Or mm. do you, you know, have them like coming out of this like, you know, the arms like basically out of the armpits of you know, you have like shoulder right above one another. I or do stack you them in that? tight. Like I put another uh set of you know, pecs and armpits and all that, like right underneath the same rib cage. Like I keep the same rib cage. So you do make it a, a little bit longer. Like maybe they have more ribs. Um, but yeah, I don't really double up the whole trunk. Mm. Um, I've gone to kind of a, I haven't done. I, what I've done is um, I've done both. And it's an interesting thing because the double trunks, to me, seems like you're stacking bodies, and that doesn't really work for me either. But I do, yeah. I'll do like they the rib, cool. I'll do the rib cage, and then I'll go back and add like the next set of arms, like coming out of his midsection, uh, and just kind of elongate the the stomach muscles. So it doesn't really work either. But that's kind of how I've decided that's that's the route I'm going. For and I've had people go, oh, it wouldn't work that way. And I'm like, okay, well, show me a forearm guy, and then I'll you can argue with me, you know. 
um, of what will work and what won't work. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bearwolf13 says, I hope you all on for, on for a little while. Nintendo is about to do a direct video about the new Zelda game I pre-ordered. Oh, brother. Get your priority, <laughs> man. What are you doing? Um, that video will be there later. Yeah, exactly. This won't. Aaron's taking it down. <laughs> Too much booty in this episode. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of uh, monkeys, another true story. Rec uh, Geek Avenger says recently at the Japanese zoo, a female monkey got pregnant, and they had no clue or the opportunity to do so. It happened. She was in an isolation cage. Mm, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, I don't know. What are you implicating? Never yeah, mind. No, no, I just, um, <laughs> something kind of creepy going on there, maybe. Um, oh, wait a minute. Here's more information on it. Well, they tested the baby's DNA, and the father was the male monkey in an isolation cage next to hers. Apparently, there was a nine millimeter hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, guys ain't gonna be held back by no wall. <laughs> is that a monkey glory hole? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a very tiny monkey. Glory Golly! Hole. Oh my goodness! What did uh, what did um, what was the line in Jurassic Park? Uh, you know, nature will find a way. Yeah. <laughs> nature will find a way. <laughs> They'll find a tiny Always glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey glory hole action. <laughs> someone's, someone's Googling that right now. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't. <laughs> they got to come on to this show to find out stuff like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I should look All up. Right. I am kind of struggling a bit here with my, uh, my white ape. So you're getting a chance, Kelsey, to... Kind of make your way through your struggles as I'm, uh, and David just rolling along with his Johnny Comet. Is uh, we know he won't get done, so it doesn't really. Matter. <laughs> hey, I'm only inking this, so yes, I will. Oh crap! Uh -oh. Okay, now we've got some problems. No, well, I'm, I've made it extra hard for myself because I'm drawing a wolf, uh, uh growling. And... Dude, I'm drawing a giant monkey. Okay, so don't come crying monkey. to me. Monkeys are at least human shaped. I am drawing a wolf. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'm trying to think about Frazetta used to draw this stuff with not accurate, but with a little bit of a uh, an artist touch uh, where they had, I don't know, they, they look different. Right. Eyes and stuff. It, it, it's but they, they work. You know, yeah. it's like him and Claire Wendling are, can really you know, kind of bring the noise when it comes to animals. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't even matter if it's if it's right or not, because it just looks cool. Yeah, she's she was a big influence for me for a long time. Uh, okay. What happened to her? Did she just... She's still out there uh, drawing, uh, but she's drawn like fairies and children and, uh, you know, bugs and just stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, like you know, and bugs like fairy. I don't know. Just, so, she, so she's so she's drawing political topics. Yeah, yeah. No, it just uh, it all looks like uh, like Hallmark card kind of stuff to me. Just really, really well done, you know. But girly stuff. I don't know. I'm just not in that. I remember she was introduced to me. Uh, I was working on Jimmy Neutron, and we had a bunch of like uh, ex Disney guys there. And you uh, worked on this, Jimmy Neutron seriously? Yeah, yeah. I worked on the movie, not the show. Um, as but, what like storyboards or I did everything I'm, I'm listening in the credits like five different times I was an animation checker character designer backgrounds additional art all kinds of stuff my kids love that show we used to watch that all the time and I, I remember the movie too we went and saw the movie oh uh, it was such a pain because I, I would like I would take any opportunity to draw something cool you know <laughs> Because uh, like they had comic books appear in the movie, and I'm like, can I draw the comic books? And I <laughs> so, like, any chance I get to draw, not draw like big headed kids with ice cream hair, you know? Like uh, it was, and we did it for like a year and a half or something. I was drawing, but anyway, all of these uh, ex. My favorite part of it was just we had some Don Bluth guys, animators, learning how to do 3D for the first time, and. They had all these stories about Don Bluth drinking weird soup out of a mushroom cap 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like every day he would bring this cooler with this giant mushroom cap in it and he would fill it with soup and drink it out of you know like <laughs> just weird he was a weird dude uh but one of them was an ex-disney guy um he actually won an academy award uh, uh for some mickey mouse shorts or something um but he was like you want to see a woman draw like a man and i was like what does that mean? You know, like I had no, <laughs> I had no idea what he what he meant. But as soon as he showed me Claire Windling's art, I'm kind of like, oh, oh wow, yeah, because it was not back in the early day. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of femininity in her stuff like there is now. There's a lot of yeah. femininity in her stuff now. Um, but back then, it was it was hardcore. It was raw. Hey, you know that there's some honesty to that because when I yeah. first you got introduced to it. Um, and then I was trying to hip somebody else to it. I said, Oh yeah, this is a this is a, a girl, uh Claire Windling. He I had a friend who was just like, No, it isn't. It's a dude, you know. And he said, There's <laughs> there's guys named Claire, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so we had to hunt down a picture of this woman. <laughs> he was like he was like the female Frazetta when we all discovered her, right? Yeah, I mean that's oh, what yeah. she was. Yeah, yep. I I had never seen anything like it. It was new. It was different, but it still had those yeah that feeling of of that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but then she was she's French, so she has all these art qualities that are very French. You know, uh, great color. Uh, you know, stuff. Uh, interesting design. Perfect anatomy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she was. I wish else, the man. American studios would have treated her better, and she probably would have been doing more stuff. Well, no, it didn't matter. He said that she was one of those types that just like she would walk in and go, "It's a miserable day," you know, like oh she'd be chain goodness. smoking <laughs> cigarettes all day long. Oh my god! Oh, this oh, god is so terrible. she really was for a miserable day. Yes. She's like, "I oh, this is a miserable country," you know. And she just hate, she hated everything, you know. Just oh, okay. It's like, oh, what a wonderful day! And she'd be like, oh, "The sun is too bright." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Which I love hearing. I love. I love artists with character, you know, and that sounds like, oh, that, now that's Claire Windling, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, like if I met her and she was be, you know, I can't wait to get out of this convention. It's just terrible. It smells bad. I'd be like, ah, Claire Windling, so great to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I would want nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I did meet her and talk to her. Oh yeah, yeah, San Diego. Uh, oh, was she nice or was she like no she was very nice you were imposing on my personal space no <laughs> she, <wasn't, laughs> that she did Spanish. look very uh emaciated and kind of like you yeah. kind of wondered is, is she is that just how she is or is she yeah. not healthy or uh yeah both but... <laughs> <laughs> she's she's uh i saw a recent post from her apparently she's uh she was sick probably with the the coof or whatever you know like i i don't know but now it's that's where my mind goes when somebody's like i've been sick but um yeah she was equally as miserable then too just <laughs> you know if I am the miserable here. wherever i go i'm miserable <laughs> yeah but she she's amazing she she was probably uh one of my when she when she first appeared uh, she was one of my biggest influences, and I, I was adopting just everything I could, uh, whatever would stick, you know, um, right. from what I could glean from her stuff, because uh, it was fairly impenetrable. You know, it's like a Frazetta where you're just like, why does it look so easy? But then it's so hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's just a few lines, and yet it, it's conveying so much, and and the... The thing about Frazetta and, and Claire Wendling is also, you know, obviously we we're just talking about, but is that sort of that they have that sort of kind of loose, bumpy quality that gives their their drawings like this three dimensional weightiness that makes it believable, you know. And it's like you think, well, it's just a few lines, but trying to get those lines to do that, to feel that way, to look that way, oh my God. is yeah. really challenging. Except probably for that. case in point, what we're doing right now is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say your your booty is uh, well, it's it could be bigger, don't you think, messy, David? Messy uh, booty right now. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I think. I think if you, you guys. I am not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, 
Y'all just stop it right there. Bear, uh, Bear Wolf. <laughs> wait, wait, Bear Wolf said he was he was leaving, but he's still here. He said Louise Simonson is the only female in comics I'd like to meet because she co-created my second favorite villain, Apocalypse. Louise, or known as Wheezy to her friends, which I am one, uh, name drop. Uh, she uh, she's fantastic. She's a very talented yeah. writer, but she's also just a tremendous person. Both her and Walter are just. I did meet Walt. He's great. I didn't meet Wheezy, which is a shame because I, I hold her in high regard, both of them. Uh, she's one of – they've written some of my favorite. I was a huge uh, fan of their X-Factor run. Oh, me uh, too. That was the only X book I read was X-Factor when they were yeah. working on it. Oh, God, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, Walt is so great. He'll just, like, sit down and just give you all the time in the world, you know. Yep. Um, that's what you want in your in your comic book uh, pro, especially at a con. I, I mean, I, there's so many great stories about like, you know, uh, Jeff Smith just sitting on the floor with some kids, like showing them comics and like how to do things, you know, for hours after the con. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just great. That's what you want. That's what you want to hear. I see. I used to do that too, but I would charge them for the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah, good man. I guess. Yeah, well, <laughs> good. You know, like uh, it's commerce, you know. It's like, uh, hey, kid, there's no such thing as a free lunch. I felt like I was doing them a favor. I was teaching them <laughs> about life. I guess it depends, <laughs> you know. If it's a, uh, you know, if they come up and says, "Well, you're not bad, but uh, you know, how do you do that?" <laughs> you yeah, know, I guess you look like you're the best guy I can find for the moment. Can you show me how to do this? Yeah, it'll be fifteen. The only one with a long. short line. Can you help me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But usually that was. The, I would get approached by people looking for somebody. They thought it was like the information booth. Oh, yeah, there's a guy with no, nobody around him. Hey, do you know where so-and-so's sitting? Mm -hmm. like, here? Get out of here, you punk. You know? yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you if you buy uh, one of everything on the table. Yeah, that's right. I'll help, you out. help me out. You know what I'm saying here, kid? I'll find it myself. Thanks. Slide me a 20, you know? Um, hey, how much is that information worth to you? Eh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I see How bad do you want to find him? <laughs> <laughs> I see you asking a lot of questions here. But, uh, yeah, I see you asking a lot of questions, and my hand is still empty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with my hand open like I'm an idiot. Uh, nothing's going in it. I mean, what's that? <laughs> like monsters. Monsters doing this comics. Is like, this is like the comic book version of the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think of a joke with them, you know, make them an offer you can't refuse, but all they got to do is say, yeah, you want to draw Batman? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like they're the ones making the offer, you know, it's like, we're just... It's ten bucks a page. Oh, that's I mean, funny. I'm here to make money. I'll take whatever you give me, kid. Make me an offer. I won't refuse it. Um, Eric Medved for five bucks. Hello, all. Love these streams. Some of the best depictions of Barsoom natives were the Michael Whalen book covers. I see, he liked oh, yeah. Michael Whalen's. Those were good. I'm a big fan. Um, I love Michael Whalen. I got one of his art books. Uh, he's another guy that's kind of impenetrable. It's like, how do you do this? <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah, his stuff is cool. Uh, he did those, uh, the ones that always caught my eye were those, uh, remember those, um, I can't remember who the author was, but it was Elric, the albino barbarian oh, guy. yeah, yeah. Elric, mm -hmm. uh, Elric Simon, is, um. Simonson did something. Michael Moorcock is the writer. Moorcock, yeah. And, the horrible uh, name. Yeah, it's, that's a rough name. That's a rough <laughs> name, depending on what neighborhood you grow up in, but. Well, if you're if you're a NASCAR fan, you're filled with uh, Dick Trickles and your yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a parent, I'd be uh, not trying to ruin my kid's life. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna name my name name my kid Dick Trickle. No, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> yeah, Cole is is uh, the lucky one, I guess. Uh, Cole Trickle, right? And that that's, that's his son. Well, I'll tell you, man, Trickle's not a great last name to begin with. Yeah. You're, you've got an uphill battle as it is right there at that point. But, uh, but Cole, that's all right. I could go with that. Cole Trickle. Mm, yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. I'm going to go straight to ink here. I think I'm done penciling. Oh, look at Kelsey. No, I don't think you are. You gotta keep yeah, going. we're just going to see. Dude, wait, 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 wait. Should we take a close up of that boot? I don't think that booty's big enough. I'm being totally serious here. I would get make that. Uh, <laughs> I, now, now, hang on. now hang on. No, I'm gonna be I'm gonna blow you up here and let's take a look at this booty. Okay, so 
you know her her left cheek if you're looking at it i would raise i would raise that waist line up a little bit so that booty is rounder you're cutting off yeah like move it up higher it's, so it's, it's rounder. the dark it's the dark wolf uh uh thing on it. I, need yeah, I, know, I don't want to, i don't want your excuses i want more butt <laughs> cheek. round out that whole shape so you got bigger frazetta booty that, that's what i'm saying that whole shape <laughs> the whole, whole butt both yeah. cheek could just round you know yeah up there round it up there you go and uh, give me some more a little more rump on the right hand side too <laughs> this is very important to aaron i gotta get this right hey <laughs> If you're going with the booty for that a booty shot, you gotta get the bring the big booty. I see why you guys all like, uh, yeah, Kelsey, you do it. Yeah, <laughs> Citizen Ronan says, Think of a peach, Kelsey. A peach, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, like, uh, peach is small. <laughs> You'd see now we're getting someplace. Round that booty up there, see. Huh? Now you're getting someplace. See what now, he instigated in the in the crowd, Kelsey, against you. Uh, it means it's yeah. never going to be good enough. <laughs> Everybody knows the big booty's the thing. This is oh. I'm getting like a, a, a reminder of when I did the Iron Sights cover, and uh, every time I'd show it to Zach, he, he, he he'd be like, "Bigger tits." <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then Malin did the same thing to me. It's like oh. that was their only uh, advice. Just <laughs> it's like thank you so much. Bigger. I, I, hey, I gave you a breakdown though of, of uh, exactly what to do to booty that up. So I'm I'm not just giving you hollow uh, criticism here. I am giving you advice. Oh, I appreciate that. It'll change the whole direction of your booty. <laughs> it's important. It's a it's the one thing that'll make this piece work. But see, yep. I, now because of the pose, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice side boob. Honestly. No, no, the, no. You got plenty of room for boob. Well, if you look at her body, it's like this, right? Well, and her yeah. boobs would be down here. Yeah, but they're these are perky. She's. Uh... <laughs> but that, I mean, if you think about it, like perky, it would be like like this. <laughs> All right, no. you know, I can't help you anymore, Kelsey. You, just, you, seem to be, you seem to be lost at this point, so I'm just going to let you. You fix the booty, so I'm okay with that. Do whatever you feel is right. Uh, <laughs> beyond that. We have um, to sacrifice side boob. I don't know. Let me don't see know. what the I, chat you said. Never, you never have to sacrifice side boob. Oh, you get that Star Wars girl in the metal bikini. He knows what it's up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was Anna. I did Anna, the, that Star Wars girl. And then Cecil uh, behind her is drunk, uh, uh, drunk o Obi or Boba Fett. <laughs> Boba Fett. Booby Fett. <laughs> 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 I thought he was, uh, oh, Salacious Crumb. Yeah. Oh, God. I should have been. Yeah. I should have made, uh, put John Malin as, uh, um, maybe Boba Fett, him as Salacious, Salacious Crumb, and I should have been Java. That would have been great. I should have done that. Oh, no. See, look at this. I'm simply giving some, like, an, opinions on anatomy, and Citizen Ronan says, Aaron is a degenerate. Look at that. <laughs> 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 See, everybody thought I was a degenerate, but now yeah. we know. Now it's now there. Know. The hidden degenerate. Gotcha. I'm trying to draw a respectable young woman with a wolf. Um, S Bird Militia. I can't, I won't say the word, but you can read it. S Bird Militia. I don't know if it was legit, but I saw a Frazetta style anatomy lesson where he or somebody drew things like hams on the inside of the button thighs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many hams can you fit inside? <laughs> oh, no. Colin says, I never thought I'd be disappointed with Kelsey's art. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, working. Part of my math. You what we started? Just what wait. Started? There's watercolor yeah. happening after this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> i might go color too man i might go color too i'm about ready to start ink and i gotta do uh deja's face i finally conquered the ape and um let's see where oh yeah dude all right the booty needs to be bigger though yeah no <laughs> she's got massive hips dude she's i'm talking about the ape he needs two of them right? oh <laughs> Needs, the ape needs double booty. <laughs> <laughs> what else does he got four of? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like, how long does this go on? All right. Who's nervous? Anybody? No. Just me? I am so confident. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's going to be your downfall. 
Is it? My overconfidence will be the end of me. Probably not, but that's that's my hope anyway. That's (laughs) well, actually, the thing that's making me a little bit worried is that uh, David is actually uh gonna finish moving right along right there. He's uh, of course, we he has to light table his ink, so he's not as close to being done as he might want us to think. Don't your eyes get messed up with that light in your face all day long? He's talking to you, David. <laughs> you, he, that, he's so confident he went to here? He's, he went he's here for the internet right now. Yeah, he's like, what are you guys talking about, man? I'm taking a break. Oh, he's talking. <laughs> all right. I guess. Hello. I'm Sorry. I'm going to go with it. Away for a second. <laughs> oh, what was my question? I already forgot. Uh, doesn't the, the light, light your eyes all the time? Oh, yeah. In? Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, <then why? laughs> nice, easy answer. I got That's it. right, but I keep doing it anyway. Yeah. So I keep thinking it'll get better. <clears throat> well, I mean, why don't you, you, why do you light box it while you're doing the pencils? Like, is that, the, how does that help? Because you can yeah, see. Because I draw on both sides of the paper. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. I see. I didn't know the technique oh. or the, uh. I hate drawing on the. I got, I got a small. I need your table because your table is like awesome. I just got like yeah, a normal is. light box that sets up high, so like when I'm when I'm using it, like inevitably my arm is like bending the paper down over here and it creases it. I don't know how many times I've done that. It's where it's like now nah, just forget. Well, dude, <clears throat> and look, it just go out and chop a tree down and like you know make a new drafting table. The bigger uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, just make my own. Yeah, I feel wow. Oh my low. gosh, look at this. One slick dude is bringing the heat. He says, Out of these, out of the three artists, Kelsey is headed for a solid sixth place finish. Wow. <laughs> oh, that is throwing some serious shade. <laughs> Go on, underestimate me. What Jeff? What are you, Jeff Potts? What are you, he says? I just got here. Is Aaron drawing a trans female? He's a little <laughs> lacking in the posterior region. What? <laughs> what the heck is going on in this chat? Okay, now I feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. David's booty is just a shape. Is <laughs> just like it's just uh, hey, uh Look at look at the Johnny Comet. I'm just drawing her. Yeah. So. She didn't have uh, uh, Asius Africanus going on. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what trouble we can get in. <laughs> I think you're deep into it already, man. Uh, just <laughs> deep in the oh. booty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Got to beef up those calves, Kelsey. Kelsey, got to get her for Zeta calves, man. Uh, I'll do it, Nink. We'll see how. We'll see what happens. Okay. Here, I'll fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm a, I'm gonna use gouache just in case. I can always uh, make adjustments. My problem is I got too much Bruce Tim in me uh, uh, to draw like what? some of the shapes oh. he's got. Oh no, not like that! Oh my gosh! Like, no, Talking about all the booty today. This is a uh, this is a family show. Come on. <laughs> um, um, I want to remind everybody while I'm thinking about it. Um, next week is our tenth episode, and I I don't I don't have an idea yet what the poll question is going to be for. Uh, what, what do you guys think about like Lord of the Rings or Narnia or Dark Crystal or something like that? My my feeling immediately <laughs> right off the bat is that it's a lot of the same kind of stuff. Sword yeah, and sorcery. It's, it's, yeah, it's give me some sci-fi yeah. every now and okay, then. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, okay, yeah. We'll, how, about, yeah let's... how about between uh, uh Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, and Star Trek? Ooh, oh, get David drawing some Star Trek. Can you imagine if Star Trek won, David would have an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got a vote, so we don't know. That's so. true. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. That's a good one. And um, Battlestar Galactica would be a lot of fun, honestly. I love fun. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Well, what we're gonna do after we we're done drawing next week, so you guys make sure you give us a little extra time because uh, we are doing we're doing the first 
Graybeard's art auction right after the sh the uh, drawing is complete uh, next week. So pick out a few oh. pieces you guys want to put, or at least one piece. I'm going to have a few. There, look at that big old booty. Now you got it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, it. Pencils lie, man. Maybe uh, um, I still don't think I got it. I still don't think I nailed it. Uh, but hey, now you didn't nail the booty. Hang on, what are you I'm talking about? Here? Be careful. <laughs> what are you saying? Um, <laughs> so, after we're done drawing, and I win again next week, but it's not a competition, it's just friendly people getting together in the studio. But then we're going to do an auction for like an hour after we're done drawing. So, everybody, pass the word if you want to get some of this artwork we've been producing on this show. Next week will be the prime time to do it. So, there you are. All right, so that's next week. Mm -hmm. All right. Mark it on your calendar. And then after that, we're going to start trying to bring in a guest artist once a month. Uh, oh, cool. To kind of spice things up. Some fresh, uh, fresh meat for the grinder. That's right. <laughs> you got any hopefuls? Or you, want, uh, you don't want to poison the well just yet? I have not... Uh, I have not brought it up to anybody yet, but I've been thinking. I've been thinking. Um, I vote for Dale Keown because I know he won't finish either. I think that's an easy win for me. Well, if I can even get the dude to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's up this early. Oh, that's true. That's true. But listen to me. I'm going to easy win against Dale Keown. I know I'm dreaming. That's bad. <laughs> well, I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start with Kelly Jones and see if he wants to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. The problem is a lot of these guys are just not set up to, you know, live stream, you know, have a camera while they're drawing kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. They're easily confused. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll well, see. I'll, I'll get somebody. They got to gotta get in here and learn this at some point. This That's is right. The it's the it future. No, it's, it's, actually, it's the now. It ain't the future. It's the now. I never thought I'd see David Williams out here. So if he can get out here. Exactly. Yeah, we can get <laughs> we can get some of these other guys. I never even got it. Like I was telling uh, David, it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing YouTube and stuff like that, and he's just like, hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's cool. That that's cool. Well, you want to do it? No, no. <laughs> no I don't know if we ever had that conversation. I just never imagined you doing this, but I'm no, we glad. had that conversation several. times. Oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Get out here. Well, I mean, ultimately, did you imagine, like, I, I never saw myself doing this. Uh, no, I never thought you, Graham Nolan, uh, uh, just, I mean, that's, that's just so cool. Uh, <laughs> you're really embracing the, the next evolution, man. That's, uh, you got to. It's, you know, it's brave. You got to have these kinds of guts when it comes to, like, the art business. You gotta always kind of move, try new things, figure out where things are going. I mean, even in comics, man, I never rested. I was always like uh, exploring new options. You know, even when when cross gen started, I hit them up. You know, I was willing to try whatever, um, try new things, see what see what happens. Uh, I didn't get it to work though. Didn't get the job. <laughs> well, I took it. That's why. I can't yeah. Pull your job from you. <laughs> Um, I went whenever, wherever they were making comics. Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's the thing. There's, there, this is a, it's an always changing landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It always has been, you know, and trying to, I, I've never been a good one at staying ahead of the curve. I'm always usually, what do they say? A day late and a dollar short. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I thought this time, I was able to take my lumps, you know, as the story I've told, of course, is the uh, um, when I tried to crowdfund Garbage Man while I was still working at D.C. and it was just an abysmal failure. Mm. And then, I, you know, so I was able to sort of learn a lesson before I, it cost me, you know, because I was still working on other things when I did it. And so then when I got ready to realize that I was going to do this for real, what I had to do, I was able to get out in front of it. And, uh, you know, start streaming, start doing this stuff way before I launched so that, you know, I had had something established already. Um, 
And plus, I think COVID helped in the sense that we were all sort of stuck at home. And it's like, well, what else am I going to do? Well, I guess I'll stream. Yeah, yeah. Make, uh, yeah, you got to, um, and the more you do it, the, the, the easier it does get. So, yeah. Um, you just got to get in there and get started. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, the snappy dialogue's drying up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was waiting. Yeah, it's so easy. Uh, dead silence, radio yeah. silence. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I wanted to ask you guys about a movie, that... but I forgot what it was. <laughs> Go ahead, David. I was going to say, me and Kelsey were talking about something kind of uh, spicy, not spicy, but interesting earlier oh, yeah? about uh, a AI art. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, uh, uh, wait a minute. H is for heretic for $2 said passed out for a moment. Did D Wem say Star Trek? <laughs> yeah. No, because he's for me. confident it won't win. That's why. Uh, yeah. ID, ID Ador. ID Ador. Uh, that sounds dirty. ID. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. $2. Unfortunate quotes are the best. Nailed. Hashtag nailed booty. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, look at that. How about Flash Gordon? And we can throw Flash oh. Gordon in there as a uh, as an option too. I love Flash Gordon. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. People what, are like what, Last Starfighter. I'm like, eh, no, nah, it wasn't that. What good about one. Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon? Who do you like better, Flash Gordon? Uh, or Buck Rogers? Well, are we talking about the TV show or just the the comic strip? Just in general, you can um, pick. I'm gonna say, uh, man, that's a that's a tough one. Um, there might uh, be more going on in Buck Rogers. Uh, Buck? I, I, was, I don't know. That was a whole thing of... Never mind. I'm just thinking of the I, movie of... Go ahead. Bob You're thinking Buck of the Buck movie Flash King. Gordon? Yeah. There's not a lot going on in that one, but then I thought... Oh, no, wait, Flash oh. Gordon was kind of like retro sci-fi. That's why I like it. Right. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, uh, Bob Bug with one eye asking is king. Whew. Stop speaking. I'm trying to sleep. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad we're providing some content for people. Oh, I'm, I go to sleep by this channel. Uh, Point Blank says, Aaron's channel has become my favorite CG channel. Thank you, Point awesome. Blank. That, that's how you get in good with the guys. You see, say stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Dad, Dad's Den of Pop Culture says, make it tougher. Do Star Trek the motion picture. <laughs> oh, dude, good I love, that's one of my favorite Star Trek movies. Look at that Magnus robot fighter. See now all the sci-fi stuff starting there to go. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah. Magnus. Me too. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, so wait a minute. So we like we like Flash Gordon because of the retro, is that right? And then we like we like um uh did we say are we gonna go Buck Rogers Battlestar Galactica? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's all pretty retro at this point. I mean well yeah, but I've got to uh, Buck go ahead. I was gonna say, did uh, Buster Crab play both Flash Gordon and uh, Buck Rogers? Someone in the chat is saying he did. So, okay. Who am I to argue with the chat? Yeah, exactly. Never argue with the chat. Well, unless it's about first appearances in comics, and I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of on top of that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll straighten somebody out quick. Well, somebody, uh, yeah, somebody came after me. Well, he didn't come after me, but he DM'd me and and uh, implying that I had given misinformation about John Byrne's first work on X Men, and it turns out that I was actually uh, <clears throat> correct. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. What was the question? You remember? Well, it was his his first. We uh, on the professionals last night. We were looking at um, as we often do. We got sidetracked on different topics, but. We were looking at um, an Marvel Team Up 53, which was John Burns listed as John Burns' first work on X Men because they kind of had a brief guest appearance in it in the Marvel Team Up issue. Mm. And the guy contacted me and said, I think it was his first work was Iron Fist 15. And of course, I had to say no. Uh, <laughs> Iron Fist 15 was almost two years after that issue of Marvel Team Up. So, Ooh. And, but I was pulled. And then I. And then I got in there and said, "You're both freaking nerds. Yeah. <laughs> you both <laughs> lose. <laughs> what you guys think? Okay. Oh, that even the real answer is, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> hey, these are important things. 
No, it always cracks me up when there's guys in comics that are not like comic book reader geek fans. Because I was like, I didn't know if I hadn't become one as a kid, how would I ever have got interested in comics? But you know, um, I got like I was always interested in drawing, and like comics were kind of always around, but I never, you know, mostly are just interesting. Uh, but what until like I was getting toward the end of uh, high school, um, and gra about to graduate, and uh, kind of had no idea what I was going to do with my life, and uh, that was around the time of like uh, the commercial with Liefeld, and you know, Image Comics was forming, and uh, it just suddenly it was like a new field of opportunities was opening up. And I was like, I wonder if I could do that, you know, uh, draw comic books. And and then I became well, obsessed with them after that because I, you know, you start seeing all the cool stuff. But, but you didn't, you weren't like a big avid reader as a kid? No. Uh -uh. Really? No, I, I was a movie fan. I, I watched oh, movies. Right. Yeah. That's all I did too is watch movies and read, read and read comics. It wasn't like one or the other. It was both. Well, I had a friend that was a real big uh, comic fan, and I, I remember like kind of reconstructing some of my memory about discovering comics. Uh, I did see uh, he had just like a shelf full of them, just stacked up, just in terrible condition because he was a big reader. Um, but uh, I remember seeing John Byrne's Alpha Flight um, and... Uh, what else? Uh, uh, John Buscema's Wolverine number one, uh, and that got me because of the the black outfit. Like I had no idea who Wolverine was. I thought that was that was the first time I ever saw him. So that was what he looked like to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, you know, before that, I had a a teacher. I remember our class just going nuts one day, and that's just right before the image boom and everything, and. Uh, I went, he was just over there, look behind his briefcase, just, you know, ignoring all the noise and just the madness going on in the classroom. And I, I walked over and see what the hell he was doing. This is your teacher? Was, yeah, my math teacher uh, hmm. in uh, junior high school. And he was reading Spider-Man comics. His briefcase was <laughs> filled with Spider-Man comics. <laughs> and, and I was like, what? You like Spider-Man? Because I'd heard of him. I, but I, you know, from movies and, or, you know, the TV show and all that stuff. And right. uh, I used to watch Spider-Man as Amazing Friends on the cartoon. And I loved yeah. it, you know. And uh, I never really thought about reading a comic book of it. And he had a whole briefcase full of them. I was like, where do you get these? And he was telling me about stores in the area. Go go to this place, go to that place. Uh, so one of the, one of the early stores I ever went to was called remember when, which is such a great title for a comic mm -hmm. book store. Yeah. Remember it was a memorabilia store. So you can go in there and they had every Drew Struzan movie poster you could ever want. Uh, wow. Every movie poster period. They had all the movie lobby cards. Uh, where, did, every where, movie. Were you, where were you at? Where were you growing up? This at? was in Dallas, Texas. Okay, right? It so might the couple ran the place was pretty old, so I have no idea if it's still there. Their collection was insane. I mean, every I bought all my uh, movie memorabilia stuff there, uh, making of books, uh, lobby cards. I had lobby cards for from uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, I still don't have those. I, I can't remember what I did with them. <laughs> I, I mean, I bought all this stuff before I realized it actually had value. It just had value to yeah. me. Right, right. Yeah. Us foolish um, kids. Well, man, I, I bought tons. I had Drew Struzan posters until I couldn't, I had no more room for anything. So um, now they're all in tubes. <laughs> well, Mine I are all in storage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, same thing. Yeah. I've got, I've got, uh, you know, it, it took Shelly a while after we got married for her to kind of, kind of warm up to what the heck I was doing and, you know, what my interests were. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one day we decided we had this smaller kind of a ranch style house um we lived in hillsborough oregon and oh we, i lived there did you really yeah sure did where at uh hillsborough uh gosh man it's so long ago i'd have to like think about it now uh, outside of portland right yeah yeah well, kinda, I, I was kind of up in the hills my dad was working on a super collider there and I wanted to get a job at Dark Horse, so I went and moved out with him, 
and I'd take them to work and then I'd go uh, and bang on, literally bang on the window at Dark Horse trying to get somebody to come out. And they're like, do the tour. And I'm like, I don't want to do the tour. I want a job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's sorry. awesome. <laughs> what was your story? I just sidetracked you there. Sorry. Uh, I can't it wasn't important anyway. It's all about you, Kelsey. Anyway. Hills, Hillsboro, Oregon. <laughs> Yeah, we um, so we had, we had a fairly decent sized backyard because it was an older home, you know, a '70s home, and uh, so we added a kind of a great room onto the back of the house because the house was only like 1,300 square feet, right? And so we had had uh, we had one kid, and we were thinking about having another child, and we're like, we need to, you know, we need to get a little more room in here. So we added this big great room onto the back of the house that became this giant family room. And I'll never forget the the. The night when Shelly was, you know, she was looking around all these blank walls and stuff, you know, as it's coming together. And she goes, you know, we could do like a, a movie room in here. You know, we could put up your movie posters and stuff. And I was just like, if I could have done backflips, I would have done backflips. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that changed everything. So we, since that time, no matter where we've gone, the, um, or where we moved to, we've, the, the family room is, remain the movie room so i have like like six or seven movie posters framed hanging up and then i got all my cameras because i collect like movie cameras and stuff oh nice and, um, dude I, I want to talk to you about that i do too i collect cameras i got a few like do you have like movie cameras like 16 millimeter 35 well, millimeter? The only, the only, yeah mostly eight millimeter because the 16 millimeters are too freaking expensive but um i do have a, a nice reflex viewing bolex oh uh, okay cool uh, it's not for like a Boilu 16 millimeter with the three lenses that change, oh, you know, really? with the rotate the old mm -hmm. ones from yeah, the uh, 80s and 80s. Yeah. yeah, dying to get one of those. We, uh, yeah, I've got that. I've, then I've got a bunch of like, I got a Super 8 Bolex or an 8 millimeter. They didn't have Super 8 back then, but, mm. um, and then like some, uh, like if I can find any old, like pre 1960 movie cameras, I'll grab them, you know. They used to have great out in Hillsboro by the the fairgrounds. They used to have like these trade shows, but they, well, not trade shows isn't the right thing. More like swap meets, but they were like cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. They were a camera show, and you could go score old movie cameras. And this is like I'm not talking like when I was a kid. I'm talking you know just 20 years ago. Oh wow! And uh, so I got some cameras out there, uh, but it's like anything else. You start you start collecting that stuff, and you run out of places to put it. Yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. And you keep having these big visions that you're going to, oh, I'm going to shoot a movie on this someday, and it never happens. No. But Dad's Den of Pop Culture for $5. Thank you so much. Says, drawing idea, live action TV versions of superheroes. Lou Ferrigno, Hulk, Reb Brown, Captain America, Nick Hammond, Spidey. Oh, that's uh, funny. I'm going to do likenesses, though. I know. That's the brutal thing. It's like, yeah. where you put them in their mask on? And, you know, okay. That's true. <laughs> this is in the spirit of... <laughs> Bearwolf, who keeps threatening to leave to watch video games, is still here. Says, "Glad Kelsey kept the side boob." Uh, yeah, I got a little, little bit of side, not much going on here. That might have been an old thing. I might have erased what he was talking about. I think that's what <laughs> kept him here because we kept on. Oh, boob. He kept the side boob. Um, <laughs> One Piece would be a cool theme. There are a lot of weird characters to choose from. One Piece. Are this video game stuff they're on. No, that's anime. One okay, Piece. I don't know any of that stuff. I do. Yeah. So I, I'm all in favor of that one. <laughs> Wait, look at this. How about stuff influenced by 70s dystopian films like Logan's Run, Zardos? Oh, no, uh, that's that AI stuff that they've been doing lately. What? No, no, like Roll Sword and Green. Ball. Do a thing yeah, you haven't done. done a lot of AI them. stuff like programming those kind of themes. They spit out that kind of AI art. Yeah, but they can't spit out watercolors. Good luck, AI. <laughs> they gotta wait till they get hands. Trevor Wright yeah, says, "Bo right. knows football. Kelsey knows side boob." There <laughs> um, <here> you go. <laughs> I don't even do a good representation of side boob, but I'll take a, I'll take the compliment because I do. Uh, I'm just not here. Uh oh, I just screwed up. Yeah, ah, ah, they're like starting over. Uh, I'm <laughs> rushing. I'm so rushing. <laughs> well let's see what do we got time wise here uh well we've got an hour just about an hour so 55 minutes so you're not too bad of shape i haven't even started inking yet i've been messing <laughs> around with uh deja thoris's hair and her jewelry and suddenly it's like 
I just spent a half hour on her necklace. What am I doing? Well, well I mean, is it? Do you find that uh, you can get the the inking and stuff done faster if you spend more time finessing the pencils? Um, mm, no, because it makes me it makes me ink even tighter then. Oh. Uh, but I just got sidetracked. I was we were talking and I kept working on the same thing, and I'm like, dude, you've got to progress. You've got to move <laughs> forward. Make her butt bigger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you do this when you're working on pages? Do you get like, you have to correct, you know, you're like, uh oh, I'm, you know, get focused, Aaron. I These do. Pages done. Yeah, I do sometimes. Uh, when it, Normally when I, my normal working conditions, but since I've been working on Wraith of God, the whole idea is you're to. You're excited at that point, right? <clears throat> Well, it's like at that point, with Wraith of God, it's kind of like the idea is to keep it loose. So you've got more of this kind of, you know, so I can come in with the inking and do more work with the inking. Yeah. And um, so I've been pretty good about not overdoing the pencils. Um, but this is such a, um, how should we say, a... Uh, Competitive but not competitive stream. That it, uh, <laughs> it, uh, I, I, I'm getting it's a lot of competition, right? No, no. Know. Every week we come in here, and I'm like, I got to do better than I did last time. <laughs> that's yeah. good though, I right? Do. I mean, that's a good yeah. thing about the uh, wanting to keep up in the game a little bit. Yeah, that's right. I mean, because it's not <laughs> iron sharpens iron. That's right. It's not a competition, but it is a studio environment with, uh, you know, a, at least a couple of talented guys. And, um, <laughs> no, you're don't cut yourself short, Aaron. You're in there. You're, yeah, exactly. you're yeah, very like, talented. <laughs> <laughs> cut yourself some slack. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, well, I definitely don't have Frazetta's inking uh, finesse. Um, <clears throat> But well, you know, you either got to go, yeah, you got to you either got to go brush and kind of go lush with the brush, or you go really, really fine line with the pen, you know, because you seem to be like either or. But I'm afraid if I watercolor this and I use a uh, micron, I may, it, I'm afraid it might bleed a little bit. I know that these calligraphy pens don't bleed, so I'm, I'm going with this calligraphy pen, which is a little bit more of a challenge because I still haven't. I think David's got a better grip on his than I do because I, I'm still having trouble getting the the uh, that's this flat edge to do what I want it to do all the time. Mm. No, I'm still learning. Um, you're pretty committed to figuring this pin out. Like you like it that much? Well, I um, like it because it's waterproof. It definitely. I found that some of these other pens that are supposedly waterproof. They they can bleed a little bit, and mm. uh, this one didn't at all. And uh, now I do have an advantage because this is a white ape, so it's not like I'm going to have to do a ton of coloring on him. But still, mm. see how I planned that? I could have gone Tars Tarkus, which would have been green, and then I'd have a problem. But I just have a white ape, so. Mm, good smart yeah. works. Works smart. A hairless white ape, although I don't know if that really helps. But... Um, that sounds talk... like me when I shave. What? <laughs> <laughs> we had a discussion about the John Carter movie, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. I mean, I haven't I seen it in a while, but I remember like, why is everybody complaining? Seems like an okay movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a. I don't know much about the lore, so I don't. Maybe if that was the thing that everybody was complaining about. I, don't I hey, I do know the lore, and I love the movie. Oh, okay. But I'm. Yeah. But, it, but it's you go into that again. If you if you're predisposed to something, it's hard to know if you're actually giving it a fair judgment or if you're just like i love this i don't care if it's oh something. that's true yeah and uh, so i wasn't that... really sure if i if i was you know giving it a a fair review because i i wanted to like it so bad right that 
I did. But I thought it was clever. I like how they used the uh, uh, the bald guys, uh, you know, the and the way they tr they kind of explain the travel from one place to the you know from Mars to Earth, which in the books is just sort of it's very sort of um, not fleshed out at all. You know, mm. it's kind of like I went into this cave and I fell into a trance and I woke up on Mars. You're like, okay, well, thanks, but how did you get? There? <laughs> um, you know, but they they actually kind of made an effort to explain that, and I thought it worked really well. Does it start? Is the book similar in that um, it starts a, with a recollection of a relative going through like he's dead, right? Like in that how the movie no, 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 no. It okay. it's just it starts. The book starts with John Carter. Uh, you know how they had this the, the part where he was running from the Indians or whatever and hid out in the cave. Mm, yeah, that's very accurate to the beginning of the thing. And then he okay. he like he fall he could fall gets in this cave and then just kind of falls into this weird trance and ends up on Mars. And it's like the story begins and you're kind of like, hmm. I guess I'm not supposed to ask any more questions. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. Go with this. And, uh, you know, they, they distract you by saying that everybody was naked and you're like, Oh, well, <laughs> doesn't matter how he got here now, as long as everybody's naked. <laughs> uh, enough of my foolish questions. <laughs> I know, get on with the story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I need to read some of these. I was thinking about this earlier. Um, somebody was talking about uh, Steinbeck in this video I was watching, and uh, they were talking. It was like a, uh, it was like a, what was it about? It was not not ancient aliens, but something something kind of like that, like woo, some woo. And he had written about stuff like this in his book, the Shadow People, or something. I don't I don't remember what it was in reference to, but. Um, I don't know why, but it just made me start thinking about, man, I've never read any Steinbeck. You know, should I? I mean, <laughs> not even in school. Well, I guess probably reading no, what, they, no. what they expected you to read probably when you were in school is very different than what I was expected to read when I was in school. Uh, we read all of that stuff, you know, that was like required reading. No, we didn't. We didn't really have any of that. Did they have reading you know? in your school? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly there was a lot of bars and, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, really structured kind of like i gotta go yeah. to the yard at this time no yeah. uh, no. <laughs> no i remember reading some stuff but you know the it was shakespeare things like that you know it was like the the pretty pretty classic stuff but we never got into like um uh oh man who's the guy from florida or who lived in florida or cuba um castro no, no, no. The, the, <laughs> the writer. Uh, um, Hemingway. Oh, I forget. Hemingway. Yeah, Hemingway. Thank you. Yeah, Hemingway. I never read any Hemingway. That's another one where I'm like, should I read some Hemingway? I mean, I need to see the chat. They're probably telling me. Of Mice and Men, Grapes and Rafts, required reading for my freshman year of high school. Sinesta says. Um, or is it Sinist? How do you say that name? Um, no. No. John Carter would have been great universal or parent. Okay, Jack Jackie Daytona says Disney is the de death nail death nail of any creative IP they buy. John Carter would have been better at Universal or Paramount. But I mean, if you look at like Universal so. Monsters, I mean, they just destroyed that. That's true. They did jack up that whole thing. In one movie, they destroyed an entire line. Well, three three movies. People forget about uh, the Dracula, which was okay. Uh wasn't bad. I just don't remember it. But then they they had uh several frankenstein things they tried to do um yeah, they've been they trying that universal it. monster game forever no they tried to reboot the the whole make right i know they were like, trying right? that dark universe business but, right 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 but i mean they've been trying to do the universal monster reboot for long before they ever decided that they've been trying to get that off the ground and nobody is interested Obviously, it's like a handful of people that really want that because, like, your average movie goer doesn't seem to care. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. About that. Okay. The thing with the Universal Monsters is that you Uber fans that have a fixed idea of how these characters mm. should look and act. And anytime somebody deviates from that, no matter what, I have the naysayers. It's crap, just like the Benito Del Toro 
throwaway to be fun. It was it was slow parts in it, but there's still some fun aspects of it. It made me laugh, and it and truth be told, I liked it better than the original. Because when Which I saw the original, what did you say the the Guillermo what now? Which one? The Guillermo del Toro uh, werewolf, Wolfman. Oh, remember that wasn't werewolf? Guillermo. That wasn't del Toro. No, that was I the mean, guy Benicio, that did the Benicio here. del Toro. Benicio oh, del Toro. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the actor. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. And so when I saw that, I was just like, oh, that was fun. Because when I look at the, the original classic, I fall asleep all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, the thing about that uh, that Wolfman, that version of the Wolfman, is, that's that's some like serious Rick Baker work. That I mean, it's the that is that, fantastic uh, Rick makes Baker that movie work. for me. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons Benicio, I watch it is the art direction is absolutely amazing. You didn't think Benicio's performance was good? Oh no, he no, did great. Did when you I can hear him, perfect choice. Okay. <laughs> I just um, can't understand what the guy says. He's like, no wolf man. Whatever. I don't know. It's. It, I thought the movie was okay. I, I didn't think it was as bad as people thought it was, but you know, I. That to me is like Jurassic Park movies. You know, I don't care if they're any good or not. If they have cool dinosaurs in it, I'm watching it. <laughs> and uh, although the, that, God, I just watched one of those recent ones um, where they were auctioning off the dinosaurs. Oh, I, I've never movie. seen any of those. Oh, I saw number three. That was pretty. That much was where not I good. But <laughs> but uh, getting back to the Wolfman, that scene where he's in the. Um, lecture hall and he transforms yeah. they got him tied up in the in the wheelchair yeah. oh yeah 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 right and here's the thing i saw um i saw rick baker was on with um joe rogan and he was talking oh. about that scene and that was all i thought it was practical but it wasn't it was all cgi he oh. said he designed the makeup you know the look of the wolf man and he did the makeup on uh, del toro but like the transformation scenes and stuff, it says they're all CGI. But they're oh. that's really good CGI because I it had me fooled. I wasn't quite sure if I was seeing uh, practical effects or what. I, I was sold. Like it was it was kind of boring uh, at times. Um, but when it when it's on fire, it literally it's on fire. Like the the scene where like werewolves are battling out in a burning building. I'm like sold. Mm -hmm. I'm like whoa. <laughs> Now this Dude. guy's got H's for Heretics got it figured out for five dollars. Thank you, H. He says Howard, Lovecraft, and Lopresti are the only writers that matter. <laughs> Thank you so much. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's, that's the kind of the reinforcement right that I need to keep going every day. <laughs> but you know what's what's surprising to me is that they have not done a creature from the black lagoon because that that's just you know. Oh, yeah. Somebody remaking like a, a big uh and Guillermo, monster, you know, Guillermo kind of did it right with his uh one that won an Academy Award that uh which I still haven't seen. Um, yeah, that was uh uh a little bit of a uh, creature and a little bit of Abe Sabian. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I have not seen that. Um, I just but it wasn't, don't it, wasn't know. Really, it wasn't a horror film though, you know what I mean? It's like it, right. was, it was creepy, and that you know, so it was a bestiality film. film. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I didn't really want to see it. Yeah, I actually own it. it. I own it and still have not seen it. My like, son I, I, worked I, I, on that film. Oh, no kidding. That little, Whoa. yeah, he was down there, um, as an intern at uh, Legacy Special Effects. Oh, wow. And he was, he's not an artist, he's an engineer, and um. They were intrigued Sorry. by him because most of the people that come there that want, want jobs are artists or, you know, craftsmen of some sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like an engineer. And he's like, yeah, okay. So they, they gave him the internship and he worked on that film. He worked on the um, the gills, the the, me the mechanism yeah. that made gills, you know, flutter or whatever. That'd be and, fun to uh, work on. I mean. Oh, I dude, I went in there twice. You know, once to drop him off and got a tour, and once when I picked him up to tour again, and it's, it's just cool. Uh, I got a love hate Mike. relationship with Guillermo, but I, I yeah, really do. I really do appreciate his art direction. His craft is impeccable. 
Uh, I just wish he could tell better uh, stories. <laughs> he's like Tim Burton. Like he's all about the uh, the visual, the aesthetic. The yeah, yeah. But uh, I have a friend who worked on the actual, who sculpted the practical suit for that. Um, oh, movie. whoa! Yeah, Mike Hill. You know oh, Mike Hill? Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, next time you talk to him, tell him I just think he's awesome because I, I <laughs> that guy's amazing. Uh, I'm such a huge fan of his stuff. Oh, I'm serious, dude. I yeah. think that could be great. Is he part of yeah. your Sandy Colora connection? Is that is that related? Because doesn't he Sandy do stuff like that? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. They know each other. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're best how did of you meet anymore, him? but <laughs> oh. yeah. How did um, you meet him? How did I meet Mike Mike Hill? Yeah, uh, it was a long time ago. Like when I was working at Warner Brothers and. Um, I knew he was into Spider-Man and I saw some stuff that he was working on and he was making like practical suits of it. And I contacted him through there, through um, a superhero hype at uh Oh website. yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but before it was superhero hype, it was Spider-Man hype. Oh, okay. And um, right when the, the movie was announced of Sam Raimi doing that movie, they created that website. Oh, and yeah, right. I was the first person to give Spider Man hype any news, like actual news, <laughs> about what was happening on the Spider Man set because I snuck onto it because they were shooting on the Warner Brothers lot. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. And I walked onto the Warner Brothers lot, and this was the scene when Spider Man uh, stops the, uh, the bank robbers. And then also the other shot they were shooting the same night. They were shooting for like two or three days, but the uh, second night I went on both times and I made them think that I was a a, a working hand just you know, <laughs> walking around and saying, oh, yeah, go, pick up those cables over there and all this kind of stuff, even though I had a Warner Brothers jacket. That's how you do it, you, were actually, it you, were, minute, you were actually doing work on the film just to kind of- No, like, I was pretty- and <laughs> well, right, but I mean, yeah, you were like you know, cables and stuff, and they like telling you to do yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was like, like hey, I'll move, that, move that over. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing. Uh, so then the next day, shooting the upside down rain kiss and all that kind of stuff, and the fight and all that kind of stuff, and all yeah. on the Warner Brothers lot. <clears throat> and um. So you're supposed to be working. Uh, you're out there screwing around is what you're saying. Yeah. That's one time they busted me because I was wearing some Warner Brothers. They're like, hey, who's this guy? But the next that next time they didn't catch me. And so they were filming up until like two or three o'clock in the morning. You know, so on the abandoned things on the reverse side where they did the upside down kiss and they did the, the fight scene with all the um, thugs that were trying to, I guess, uh, rape uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Mary Jane. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the abandoned buildings, I hid in there and I was watching them film while the rain was coming down. So I'm looking through the window, just looking at them film shot in the about and uh, little buildings and stuff. And I got to meet uh, Benny the Jet Nikitas, the oh, martial nice. artist. He, he Love fought, Benny the uh, Jet. Chan. Yeah, he fought Jackie Chan. The best. Yeah, fight dude, he's ever. great. Yeah, yeah with yeah. his like crazy eyeshadow eyes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he perpetual smoky eyes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he was real nice, real real short guy. But you know, oh, I, wow. I, I still felt like he could kick my butt. Oh, um, <laughs> um, so I got to see a lot of stuff there. So I told him all that information on Spider Man hype at the time. Now is superhero hype. And that's how I met um, uh, Mike Hill because he was so into Spider-Man. And so I don't know who reached out to who first, but we started talking all the way back then, you know, so. Man, if 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 I had money, dude, I would hire that guy to sculpt me something because he's just freaking awesome. Well, I helped him um, get in contact with Alex Ross and Alex Ross had him do those life-size Batman and Superman that are in his really? house, those oh, that look wow. like his art. Yeah. So I helped broke you. <laughs> Hopefully you paid really good money for this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what did you what did you oh, get out of it? Not a damn thing. Not, <laughs> not a, <laughs> yeah. 
but Mike Hill got paid a grip. <laughs> Let's put it that nice. way. Nice. Do you know what he charges for like those life sized uh, sculpts? He uh, does? Probably a lot more than what he charged Alex at this point. But yeah, he it, it, it's up there, like in the you know thirty, forty thousand type thing. That's what I would wow. think. Wow. But when you're a Guillermo del Toro, you can afford it. He's got a bunch exactly. of little stuff. He did a Frankenstein that's in uh, uh, Guillermo's house that's actually like a Frankenstein head, and it's like the size of a wall. It's huge. You should you really? should Google it. You should Google it. It's awesome. Well, when my son was down there working, uh, Del Toro came in a couple times because they were working on you know Shape of Water, and uh, and it was about the time that those um, that he had that um, uh, that that show down in LA of like his private collection. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of Mike Hill stuff in there. Like there was a, there was a life-size Bride of Frankenstein mm -hmm. uh, from the, or a uh, scene from Bride of Frankenstein where a Karloff is sitting there on the bench with her and, and she has her arm extended and he's holding her hand and kind of petting her hand. Mm -hmm. He did that as like a, like a life-size recreation of that scene. It's just fantastic. Oh, wow. And yeah. how much do you think that cost? You know, I mean, it's like, geez. But again, you know, the movie director, they got money, right? <laughs> well, well, no, they get the movie some... to pay for it and then they take it home. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah they work into a budget. And, uh... I mean, Mike Hill is a very uh, friendly guy and, and approachable guy and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure he gave Guillermo like a a favor, like a, a solid. I, I'm not saying he did it for free, but you know, he gave friend prices or something like that. Yeah. And and I'm sure that friend thing, you know, one hand washes another. So the next time Guillermo does something, Mike's in yeah. in the mix somewhere. <laughs> well, from well, what I've from yeah. what you can glean, Guillermo's that type too. He seems like a a real friend of the artist, you know. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Well my son said that uh, what they, they did was they got they, they finished making the, you know, the, the shape of water costume or, you know, whatever. And um, they, they kept painting it, but Del Toro would come in and he, he wasn't getting what he wanted, you know, the mm -hmm. color wise. Mm -hmm. And um, so he brought in Mike Hill, you know, which I thought was interesting. So Mike Hill is coming in over the top of legacy special effects, working there in their studio, uh, you know, you figure that must have ruffled some feathers, but I guess, you know, yeah. um, but he, yeah. So he went in there and painted, it was just the face. They couldn't get mm -hmm. the face the way that Del Toro wanted it. Uh, the paint job on the face and they had Mike come in and do it. So my son tells me. They like, should have looked oh, at he it did, as a, uh, he did more than a paint job. To learn from a master, you know, he did more than a paint job. Really? Oh yeah. So he helped. He helped design the suit then, or sculpt the suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, my son wasn't. Uh, I mean, he was working over on the mechanics stuff, and so I'm sure he would. You know, I mean, it, it was one big room with just stations, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, like a big warehouse kind of thing with stations, and so you could see what was going on. But if you weren't over there where they're painting or sculpting, then you may not have. You is know. he still there? Or do you, is he? No, they couldn't. The thing is, my son is very practical. I mean, he's a big movie fan. He's a comics fan and stuff. They just but he can't also, afford him. Yeah, he, well, that's the thing. It's like yeah. they go, uh, you know. First of all, all the guys he worked with there, all the older guys that like worked on Jurassic Park and their stuff, don't go into this as a career. Don't do it. You'll be sorry, kind of thing. <laughs> uh, you know, because it it's it's getting tougher and tougher to it's a meat grinder. Yeah, well, and to keep those guys busy because everything's going uh, CGI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so he... Uh, try to get all, really good friends with Guillermo. That's how you do it. <laughs> right. And uh, they, kept, they kept telling him, don't, you don't want to do this for a living, kid. You don't want to do it for a living. And uh, so they offered him a full-time job, but they were offered him like half of what he could get just as a normal engineer. Oh, wow. Sure. And it seems like my son, now me, I'd have been dumb and taken it. 
right? Well, that's that's what they do. They prey on the fan, you know, the people that want to be in Hollywood and want to do movies, and they they know that. It's predatory, I think. We can get these people cheap. Yeah, because if they won't do it, someone else will. Um, uh, like Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> but my son was like, he was really annoyed with how archaic they approach the uh, engineering of all of it. And so he was like telling, uh, I think Alan Scott's one of the guys that runs it. And he was like, he's like, yeah, he goes, well, if I stayed here, we'd have to redo this. We need a new program for that because this doesn't work effectively. And they're kind of like, well, slow down, kid. <laughs> you know, they just need it to look good for as long as it's on camera. That's, that's all right. that really matters to them. But as like, long as it were- works in that time. But they would have these programs like, you know, you'd go over to the, I don't know what you call it, the lathe or whatever, you know, and they, oh, oh, yeah. they'd machine these parts out that they needed. But the the program was like, you know, 10 years old and really inefficient. And so mm. my son's like, we need to upgrade this program and this machine and all this kind of stuff. And uh, but I mean, they really liked him, but he was just like, you know, he's like, it's like, Dad, why would I take? this money when I can go and get a jo- job in engineering and make twice the money. And I'm like, yeah, but it's so cool. Like, <laughs> uh, but I can say I have a son who worked on movies. Yeah, and I could get to go in all the time and see what they're doing. <laughs> um, that would be cool. So, yeah. So he, uh, he took a real engineering job. He's glad he did, you know, but he still, but it's like, you know, that's the thing. It's like, he still got that six month experience there where he worked on that stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. Can't take oh, that. Oh well, he can go work for Elon, be an aerospace engineer. And they don't pay very well either. He's like, oh really? Bad. Oh yeah, my gosh. He said uh, SpaceX is the worst because they they expect you to work like sixty hour weeks and uh, they don't pay great. But That's the new Hollywood. You, yeah, you, you want to help us get to the thing. Mars, right? Well, yeah. As Aaron, no as Aaron explains this. Elon just bought YouTube, and we're about to get shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I love Elon. I'm just saying that uh, apparently, you know, it's like a privilege to work at SpaceX, you know. So it's kind of like, yeah, I'm not paying you guys top dollar because I don't need to. It's, like I said, it's very Hollywood, just what, like we were talking about. Yeah, uh, you get those young, hungry types in yeah. there. It's probably a good idea. Yeah, my son's just those... practical for his own good. Yeah, but it's going to serve him well because he's doing really, really well. Right. Yeah. And I'd be the guy, I'd be in Hollywood right now looking for a job because I took the, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same here, honestly. I mean, look where we are. Obviously, yeah, we know exactly. which choices we made. <laughs> talk about we're on top of the world. I could have been a truck driver. That's right. Could have been making the big books. Yeah, we're on like the new age TV right now. This is a, uh, we're like, we're like television stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a very, very small, t- on a very, very small screen of your computer. Yeah. You hear that thunder outside? Is that nope. you? Yeah, that's that's. It's been raining ever since we started this. <laughs> I thought that that was your stomach growling. It is too. That a little bit. Yeah. Dude, you're gonna get washed. You're gonna get washed away before you're. I can just see the water coming in and all your watercolor just bleeding out. <laughs> <I'm> like, no. <laughs> yeah, because that that would be the most the the biggest priority. <laughs> no, not the watercolor. No, never mind everything else. Getting wet. Dude, hey, seriously, if I had a fire in here, other than you know my wife and my mom, I would be grabbing my artwork and my comics <laughs> through everything else. Mom, I can't get you and my art. Yeah, that's Move right. It. Move it. You can walk yourself. You're just ninety. Yeah. Years old. You're a young ninety-one. Get out of here. <laughs> the priorities like, for I, artists are different because it's like <laughs> most people would grab their uh, photo albums. We'd grab, uh, I'd grab my uh, uh, my Daredevil by David Mazzucchelli. Or, yeah, exactly. Or, <laughs> exactly. Thanks, my pride and joy that they. <laughs> you pull in the, you know, pictures off the wall. And go, that's an original from the. Yeah, I can't, I can't leave that here. <laughs> I'd rather die, you know. <laughs> All right, so I got some monkey going on here. That's good. I'm still trying. with the monkey. It's a big monkey, and it's got four arm. Jeez, we got 25 minutes. I'm in trouble. 
That's what yeah. he clipped that. It's a big monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm rushing this uh, paint a little bit well, because of the at, time. You might as well not because we're all playing by David's rules now anyway, which is if you want to. So. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like the idea of doing some completed. Uh, yeah, so do I. I mean, because sketch, that's what people but... tune in for, David. <laughs> that monkey's not big enough. <laughs> Bigger monkey, please. Yeah. <laughs> Can you expand the monkey. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think uh, I don't think we're getting color. I'll get this inked, but I don't think we're getting color today on this one, which is unfortunate. But it doesn't mean I won't color it later because we all play by David's rules eventually, don't we? As you should. Mm. <laughs> of course, presented in a lot of black and white, so it's not. Uh... But I've had this. I've had this. This image in my head for a long time, and I was like, "Are they ever going to pick Edgar Rice Burroughs so I can do this piece?" <laughs> I mean, do you mind? I mean, what show is this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm letting you guys vote, but come on. Can you just choose what I want you to choose? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why haven't we done Johnny Quest yet? <laughs> uh, that is kind of irking me a bit because I really want to do Johnny Quest. <laughs> <laughs> but no one will vote for him. It's too old. They're like, Johnny Quest. They're always, they're always going to vote against it now. Yeah, I know. Because I know. you want it so much. Yeah, I don't I'll know what in, I would do. I'll put in mustard, ketchup, Johnny Quest, and we'll end up like <laughs> you know they'll do that. They'll say yeah, mustard. Yeah. People will be like, suddenly I'm one a hot dog. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm kind of I'll hungry. go with the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as a as a Frazetta, um, stylings are are completely uh lame I, I failed completely at my frazetta stylings well um, i you know i didn't really think of this as being that because it's kind of like that's like you know it's kind of like shooting for the moon you know we're yeah. just, we're just paying tribute to the greatness of frank by our little contributions to the world that uh, he created for us so um if if i my house gets swept away at any moment you'll know it's uh tornado or something okay it's going uh freaking crazy sounding out there right now those are always kind of make me nerve-wracking we get some wind storms around here not particularly bad but every once in a while and you start going hmm is my roof peeling off right now <laughs> yeah is this gonna I, I usually it goes to money for me i'm like how much is this gonna cost me if my roof <laughs> is peeled right now I don't think about what if I die. It's always like, oh, this is awesome. yeah. <laughs> How many John Carter sketches do I have to do to pay for my new room? <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's so weird that you think that way because I think that way too. I'm like, I'm yeah, I do. To pay off this car note. Yeah, I know. It's always, but you know, I've had people say, and it's kind of funny. They go, because I, I would like when my, um, when I was back in Florida at Crossgym, my son would always go play. I'd take him to a, our local comic shop. We knew the guys there, um, uh, Yancey Street Comics in the Tampa area. And we'd go there and play Hero Clicks. But he would play with the guys, and they'd set up a table like in the back room and play Hero Clicks, and I'd have to watch the front of the store. Mm. And uh, I would sit there and I would work on just a, a drawing of, you know, White Queen or something I knew I could fill up on eBay and make, you know, you know, a couple hundred bucks or something with. Hmm. And it was always, you know, I'd always have people go, well, you have to do a sit here and draw for two hours and you can make, you know, sell something for a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. So if can, you sell it, yeah. Yeah, if you can sell it, right. But that's why you always draw the right things, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, true, yeah. I never, I never draw the right things. <laughs> <laughs> I always draw the right things. It's like I'm not wasting my time. I'm such a mercenary. It's like, yeah, yeah. I never uh, like that's why I never really put a whole lot of emphasis on wanting to work at 
you know, draw, like I, I thought it'd be cool to draw Batman or something like that, but you know, it wasn't, wasn't in my priority. Um, uh, and I did get to do Batman adventures, so that was fun. But, uh, yeah, I just, I, I always kind of wanted to do my own thing or do something different. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Plus I don't think I was a very good superhero artist. So that was never my Wrong. favorite stuff. Superheroes were never my favorite. I mean, I love, I, I loved them, but they, I mean, if, Given my druthers, I would draw monsters or barbarians or something. But Chris Thacker says, interesting. Kelsey has the layout of Frazetta, and Aaron has the curves of Frazetta. Oh. Next time, have Kelsey draw and Aaron ink. Oh, mm. interesting. Why would I help Kelsey that way? And save <laughs> drawing by inking it for him. Um, <laughs> let's see. Henry Jeremek brings up a good point. Star Trek villains, Gorn, the Borg, Ooh. White Venomous Gorilla. I mean, there's some good stuff in oh, there. I like that. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I do Pike. That guy scared the crap out of me. More than any villain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he was like so mutilated. It was gross. Oh, my it God. It, was, it still haunts my dreams. Like terrifying. And he would just sit there with his mouth open, just beep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What if they had him like drooling and stuff? That would have been really bad. Uh, Bearwolf13 says, if Kelsey doesn't finish, Aaron doesn't mostly finish. And David, if Kelsey doesn't finish, Aaron doesn't mostly finish. And David not finishing at all, what even is this show? <laughs> Laugh out loud. Keep it the same <laughs> way, though. I love it when they throw in, they insult us, but then they go, but everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way we like it. All right, I'm going to have to switch pens because I don't trust myself on Deja Thoris is too small, and if I screw it up with that pen, I'll be really pissed. So I'm going to go to the Microns for Deja. Deja and her booty. Uh, I haven't even looked at what everybody's doing. I don't want to get... Yeah, you uh, probably shouldn't at this point. Yeah, I, I don't want to... Intimidate you a little bit. Yeah. Although your yours is coming along quite nicely, I have to admit you. Uh, Thanks. I think um, your technique for or your approach to drawing smaller is advantageous to what this show is. Well, yeah, but I mean, this is, gosh, man, this is even bigger than I normally do, and it's still small to you. How big are you working? I'm working eleven by fourteen. Well, that's how big this is. Where's oh, is it really? I think so. Where's my book? Well, eleven by fourteen. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I should shut up then. Yeah, I brought the I brought the heat this round. I was like, all right. No, I'm, I'm gonna be ready my... for when Aaron starts pulling out the small drawing talk. <laughs> I'm doing my standard black man size, eleven by seventeen. Oh jeez, oh, here we go again. <laughs> this is okay. This is just a uh, a cheap way for David to make an excuse why he's not done. Yeah. <laughs> well, it takes a want... while for that to get done on a big piece of paper yeah. oh come on like me people yeah. just put like, in all this work gosh <laughs> the heck is going on around here <laughs> <laughs> yeah so no excuses now Aaron working at the same size I know I thought I had an advantage and now I, I yeah but you know what that's it's probably why I'm not done though you know no, you guys, you guys distracted me I was looking stuff up online and you know mm -hmm. You talk to the chat, you know, you got to be friendly with the people and you guys are just grinding away and I'm messing around and now I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I know being nice to people is hard, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, not exactly, that's not exactly what I meant, but uh, <laughs> kind of did sound that way, didn't it? <laughs> You know what somebody pointed out to me? That I put a belly button on uh, Deja Thoris. And I'm like, no, she hatched out of an egg. She would not have a belly button. And I'm like, God, that's right. Is that true? Yeah. Oh. They're, like, they're like egg people. Oh, really? Yeah, they lay eggs. So like she really is an egg? She really is a hot chick. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do they – is it is it a big egg? I'm going to assume that it's – well, you know, that's a good question. Uh, but if I, it's I, a big I, egg, how, where does it come out of? And like, how well, bad does that hurt? You know, it comes out, <laughs> it always comes out, but. Well, does I, the egg I, grow? Like, if it's a small egg, it, it would uh, grow. I think it does. 
Or maybe the people are born really, really. Well, they're tiny. born like little babies, but <laughs> excuse me, but they're coming out of an egg. Is what I'm mm. saying. I, I didn't say it made sense. I'm just saying <laughs> that you know, for 1920s pulp, it made sense. I guess. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. We got, you know, maybe we're scrutinizing it a bit too much here in the uh, 21st century, but. Uh, <laughs> That's what I say about uh, '90s action movies. It's like, so what? They get ten thousand bullets per per you know gun. I like that. That's right. It's you know you want to. Uh, if you stop to reload your gun in a movie, you're wasting my time as a movie. Exactly. Player. That's exactly right. <laughs> I want unlimited ammo. Well, and then if you run out of ammo, you got to have stuff laying around you can use as a weapon, like uh, like uh, Arnold did in Commando, right? Yeah. He kills like probably three hundred soldiers. Yeah, him. with a saw blade, with a <laughs> yeah, he had everything he get his hands on, you know. That's like one of my favorite movies. Well, it's it, it is truly the definition of so bad it's good, you know. I, I, I do have another movie. I can watch those movies uh, over and over and over, um, you know, more than any other movie that wins like awards or whatnot you know i'm oh, a cloud yeah. crowd pleaser fan i like those kinds of movies well you know what i used to tell people in film school just to really tick them off i was even a troll back then um <laughs> they would uh we would go we, we'd have these classes where we had to watch like you know french films or you know some foreign film like to seek as the bicycle thief which is you know oh yeah genius you know and you're like no whatever <laughs> one over. And I, um, I would I would say I would actually it is a good movie, but um <laughs> I would say to my classmates, I'd go, I go, I would rather watch the worst American made film than the best European film. <laughs> I go, I would rather watch, I would say this, I go, I'd rather watch Friday the 13th part three than the bicycle <laughs> thief. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and they would just go nuts. Like, are you, are you dude? That was the Dream Warriors uh one, right? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't even know. You're like insult. You, you got to be like. <laughs> well, come I love on. that one. That was a good one. <laughs> Dream Warriors. Where is, it? is that the one? I um, can't remember. But is that the one where he's like, you've got the body and I've got the brain. And he like yep. kills his brain. Open. <laughs> yep. It's the one that has the Inagata de Vida. That's the first time I ever heard Inagata de Vida. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Or in the Garden of Eden, rather. But. <laughs> In a God of the Weed. Yeah, it was in that, that movie. Huh? What a great name for a band, Iron Butterfly. Yeah, <laughs> they were so messed up. I know, it was a total, like, you know, talk about the ultimate psychedelic drug band from the city. Yeah. Iron Butterfly, dude! <laughs> yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah. At least for one song, right? Yeah, I remember that being like a big deal when we were kids because we were like, we heard all the stories that they were like on drugs, man. And they, you know, <laughs> they did. They, it's supposed to be called In the Garden of Eden. It was supposed to be like uh, uh, two minutes long. You know, <laughs> but they were so high. It's like 20 <laughs> minutes long and it's not even called, right? Yeah. You know. Just get grinding away. Yeah. Just like... I love it. It's been a long time since I've heard that song. <laughs> I like the uh the organ solo. The, yeah, you know, whatever the yeah. Good stuff. All right. Um yeah, I'm gonna keep tinkering with this, but I guess it's about as done to I gotta well, maybe do some uh, detail work. Geez, we only got eleven minutes, man. I gotta get this thing inked. So at least I can compl I can claim partial completion. Um hmm. what's hmm. David doing? See, we David never see David's like mystery over there. He never we can never see what that he's doing. <laughs> All part of the plan. It is, I keep think. You guessing. There's some sort of chicanery going on here but i'm not sure exactly what it is <laughs> it's like the prestige you know it's like there's something going on here but <laughs> that was a great movie by the way 
That was. That I think Christopher Nolan's cool. best movie. Yeah, I was going to say that's my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. I mean, that's probably the closest he came to being like a real filmmaker. I think he's more of like a showman or something. I, he's like, I don't know. He's, he's an interesting filmmaker. He is. He's. He seems. He's so caught up in uh, gimmicks. Yeah, that he's like trying to outdo himself all the time. Kind of like M Night Shyamalan, Ding Dong. Yeah. It's kind of like every film has to like be twistier than the last one or more complicated. In Nolan's case, it's more complicated. Yeah, uh, he's just he's into like new. I mean, it's interesting. He's always interesting. I'll give him that. Like I've watched every one of his movies and liked them to various degrees, but I was never bored. Right. Uh, he always managed to entertain me on some level. So, uh, well, I, know, I, I like his stuff a lot. My son is a huge honk for him, loves his films. But um, actually, like Inception, a whole lot. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's his best movie, but I do. I think that might be my favorite of his movies. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, my son's uh, the same way. He loves Inception. What's the um, Memento is really great, also. Yeah. But um, I don't watch that. I, I like I'm a, Prestige is my favorite movie. And I. It may be because of the star power that's in it, but mm. um, yeah, those guys are amazing. I mean, the acting, phew. yeah, it was all great, and the story got me because, like, uh, I I couldn't figure it out. You know, yep. I was like, I, he had me guessing right till the end. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't I didn't guess it until the end, and then and then you start thinking about everything that Hugh Jackman did to get to that point, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, right. I mean, he literally moved uh, heaven and earth to to do to try to top what essentially was just a gag. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, and he, and he didn't he didn't even you know get it till the end. He's just like yeah. so stunned that it was so simple, you know, and he had ne couldn't figure it out. But that's the obsession. That whole movie is about obsession. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's really great. And, and then, of course, and then uh, oh, go ahead. What's his name playing uh, Tesla is just the best. I mean, oh, yeah, David Bowie. Uh, David Bowie is Tesla. <laughs> it's just really great. That's such a great casting choice. Well, the thing, that, the thing that I found interesting about it was, you know, and, and there's, he always leaves you with a little bit of a question mark, like he did at the end of Inception and things like that. Yeah. But it's like, what are we supposed to gather from seeing the clone? of Hugh Jackman in the is the last thing we see is the is in his you know in his warehouse or whatever it's as it's burning down. Um I mean, what are we supposed to take from that? And that's like a big question that everybody asks. Well, I think the idea is that you know there's no telling if that's even the real Hugh Jackman in the end. You know that right. I think he's even lost sight of you know that's an no one has said that and that, yeah. This is going to sound stupid, but no one has said that because they always focus on, well, was was he actually cloning himself or was he, yeah. you know, just killing off doubles? And well, he was, yeah, both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but that's kind of, that's an interesting, that's a really interesting take, Kelsey, because I hadn't thought of that. And that may be actually correct in that that's not the point. The point is he's... You know he he's lost himself so much in what he's been doing that it's not even the real him it's anymore. It's not even the real him anymore. Yeah, and that works both psychologically and like physically. Yeah, because that's yeah, he's he lost himself a long time ago. You know, man, you got you got Aaron tripping now. <laughs> I, tripping. I have never thought of it that way. Just as kind of a moral to the story, as opposed to you know he's giving us information that we need to, to connect the dots. That's not what it is. Hmm. It could very easily just be like you said, a, mo a moral commentary on the Hugh Jackman character. And I was totally looking at it from the wrong angle. Wow. Well, and it's, you know, the obsession on the other side with, um, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, Batman. Um, uh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, me. <laughs> his whole thing was kind of similar in that he's he turned his life upside down uh to commit to the bit right like he's uh, ruined relationships um you know is in the end it was just he well i don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it but 
Um, yeah, it, it cost. It, it cost it, both it, of them. They both lost. Yeah. <laughs> and for what? You know, just this kind of weird, obsessive yeah. competition. And uh, that is that is great. And thank. You. I'm going to run that by my son because we've talked about this on and on and on and never concluded what we were supposed to conclude. And I'm going to throw that up. <laughs> I think you may be you may be dead on on that. I'm pretty smart. I oh, wrote yeah. that movie for a guy that lives in the jungle or the wilds of uh, <laughs> the bayou. You, uh, you surprise me. <laughs> I'm a pretty fart smeller. I mean, smart feller. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's a welcome well, to the jungle, that. baby. <laughs> 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 Fastmaster Dan is asking me if I uh, if I'm revisiting an old piece. In other words, uh, like redrawing something I've done before. Oh, I love. Oh, I'm not. not, not so. I mean, I've done white. I've done white ape pieces with Deja Thoris in them, but nothing like this. You may not remember. That's also no, no. It's been a while. No, I'm not. Uh, that's why it's it's so easy. It's like oh, I've drawn this before. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm I'm literally getting to that point where I'm not sure if I've ever drawn a character. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, uh, I've never drawn Superman, and then I completely forgot. I did that live stream drawing, trying to trying to draw Superman. I'm terrible at it. Well, you know what's what what got to be challenging for me is not recreating the same cover. Oh you know, yeah, run like ten years earlier, and then DC would say, "Oh, we need a cover for this," and you start to do it, and you go. I done this before. <laughs> different, you know, same cover, but just different characters. Yeah, that does. It probably does get to running together, uh, especially because like there's only so many variations of right kind of superhero cover you can do. You know, face off, facing cover, battle cover, team cover. Um. Well, and especially when they're not, you That's have all. to, find you don't have an idea what's in the issue, right? So you're just drawing yeah. iconic covers and you're kind of like without any knowledge of the content of the story. Cause that's how you could get a differing cover. Yeah. But when you don't know what's going on in the book, it's kind of like. Yeah. I, I love to have um, kind of knowledge of what's going on in the book. And I would always ask for the script um, and nine times out of 10, they didn't have one. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay so we're doing this cover for solicitations which is three months ahead and we don't even have a script yet for the book it's like wow you know yeah that's um i got into a, kind of a big argument at dc i think i was just talking to david about this before Me? we got on yeah. we we're talking about chiarello and um how i got i got into it with uh pete tomasi at uh, dc um not anything bad it was just like a you know it was for dial h for hero and i was really excited for that gig because dial h for hero had a real legacy of great artists working on it like john van fleet doing covers you know and i'm like oh man this is a chance to kind of level up you yeah. know i'm in i'm in really like intense company here with guys like that brian bull and john van fleet all these guys but then I get in there and he's like, well, we're pressed for time. We just need like a face off cover between like, this guy. And the... Oh, no, no. The first one was like a guy in a hole. He's like, we just need this dead guy in a hole. I was like, um, OK, is there a script? And he's like, no, no, no. We don't have a script yet. Uh, we're kind of w working way ahead. So I'm like, uh, all right. So I whipped out. I was like, well, I'd like to maybe have some more input on this, you know, in the future. And he's like, you know, sure, sure, kid. You know, uh, <laughs> so uh, I do it. Comes out pretty good get me to do a next one comes to me it's like all right now we need a face-off cover i'm like face-off cover like, what are we doing here man i'm like i started getting like mad i'm like i'm like would you go to john van fleet and give me a give me a face-off cover john van fleet no you'd be like please grace us with anything that you got master you know uh artist that you are <laughs> i doubt they gave him like ultimatums you know give me a yeah. Give me, a, give me a guy in a hole. Don't go to John Van Fleet asking for that. You know, you gotta, you're like, here's some ideas of what's happening in the script. Get us some story, thumbnails and we can work with it. No. And so I just, I wrote him this whole thing of this like nice, nice, respectful email about 
How, no, seriously, it was, I was trying to be nice at this point, and I was like, "Look, I, you know, I was like, I, I really got into this to try to push myself, and this looked like a real opportunity to like, you know, and it, it sounds like you just need somebody to be your hands, you know, and like I, I don't know that we're gonna work well together this way." And he's like, "Hey, do what you got to do." That's what I got back mm. from him, and I'm like, <laughs> so then wow. Chiarella like calls me up, and he's like, "Hey, what's going on with Pete?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I just I feel like." I feel like I'm not getting to do, you know, be an artist here. He just needs a guy. And he's like, yeah, they're just, they're behind. They just need to, I'm like, yeah, I know that. But I mean, at some point, right. You know, maybe get to have some input, you know, be, be an artist, you know, actually do what, what it is we're here to do. No, that just, there's no room for that in corporate um, DC or Marvel. So, but yet they got all the time in the world to tell me the color of blue that I did for the sky is wrong. You know, mm -hmm. they want it more blue. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, is it wrong? No? Shut up. <laughs> it's interesting. If you, I mean, the, the deadlines have always been an issue, always yeah. in comics. But before they went corporate, as you pointed out, when Marvel kind of owned Marvel, and DC owned DC, this stuff didn't happen. You know, it's like artists were called yeah. in and they said, okay, this is what's happening in the issue. You know, we need a cover. Or they would, in a lot of cases, you know, at DC, they would they would go uh, bring rights and enter somebody and go, just draw me a cover and we'll write a story around it. Yeah. You know? And, but there was never this kind of, okay, we need Wonder Woman standing there looking cool because we have no <laughs> idea what the script is. And you're like, what? Yeah, I mean, it... So anyway, I know now, like, I wish it, if I could have done it over, I'd be like, you know, yeah, let's do that. Face off cover. Boom. I did it in a day. You know, what else you got? Mm -hmm. What you want? A guy, another guy in a hole? What you want a guy, you want a, somebody poking right, somebody? Guys in a hole. How about that? How about the old, yeah. You know, what are you whatever. saying? Uh, I, I would just do it, make my money yeah. and move on. Like, I, I approached the mainstream like I did, you know, in the indie comics where it's like, I don't know. There's just more you could do more, and like I didn't, I didn't understand. You know, I'm like, oh, how does, how does some of these guys get to be who they are in this system? I don't, I don't. It, well, it's luck, or uh, they're really good, or you do like the studio guys where everybody's mad at them because they took all the time in the world to make the best thing ever. You mm -hmm. know, but. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Bath All Games says, "I thought this was a Frazetta celebration, but this proportions are off, and etc." What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't say we were Frazetta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're doing our best, Frazetta. We're trying here, man. We're trying. <laughs> Why don't you put her in charge? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are taking... No. Uh, Present a subject matter and doing our best with it. That's what uh, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, you know, every comic book guy's uh, dream is to draw like Frazetta, and then they do what I did right here, and then I go, oh, oh. <laughs> maybe I should go back to just kill. Yeah. yeah, where's my uh, where's my um, Bruce Tim books? Those are much easier to like figure out. <laughs> Where's my Rob Liefeld? I need to get back to my comfort zone. Well, I always looked at this, this the idea of doing this as kind of like not trying to ape Frazetta, but to, pardon the expression as I'm drawing a monkey, but um, <laughs> but monkey the idea butt? of, you know, just kind of tackling some Frazetta subject matter, you know, because that's really the best we can do. Yeah. We're all oh going to be, we're all going to be who we are, you know, ultimately as artists, but it's the subject matter. We're all, you know, we're all so inspired by the guy, but we also realize he's like next level. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like the reason he's for Zeta is because we can't draw like him. Yeah. If we draw like him, then, uh, you know. That's always kind of like the weird. Um, I mean, for Zeta did so few comics, right? Like, but yeah, the comic people have like adopted him more than any other. Yeah. Like, I mean, you don't hear a lot of like, a wildlife artist going, oh yeah, that for <laughs> it seems like it's almost entirely comic book people that like celebrate. Well, it's the subject matter, though. 
you know, and movie people like movie people. But also, yeah. he started in comics too. So, oh yeah, yeah, true that he is our native native son. But people, but yeah, but people that like comics and movies, certain movies. I mean, not people. Everybody that's into movies is into fantasy movies, right? Uh, but it's that sort of. It's the subject matter because it it. We all comic book people are into a variety of usually fantastic subject matter and that's what frank did yeah and it's so funny because i remember being at, when i was at film school at usc i took art classes you know just to kind of keep my feet in it yeah and uh you know but it was always fine arts right these pretentious fine arts classes yeah and uh i remember i was doing an oil painting and i was going in on like saturdays to work on it and there was like, you know, some of the grad students and stuff were around working on their whatevers and fine art stuff, right? And this one girl goes, oh, looks like you're a Franzetta fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just really with this kind of contemptuous uh, sort of tone. And I said, well, first of all, it's Frazetta. And I said, <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. You know, I was looking at her painting going, yeah, you're going to be working at Walmart. So don't give me <laughs> <laughs> and there's yeah. not even a Walmart created yet. And you're, you're that's right. <laughs> not there's anything wrong with working at Walmart, but I'm just saying that uh, she's like she fruit. Brought, she she's a pretentious attitude on me, and she was like painting a wall or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like Frazetta. <laughs> yeah. Well, can he draw fruit? You know? Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> has he ever done still yeah. life? Yeah, that white ape is great, but can he draw fruit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the line his, of the day. This oh, stuff awesome. is all moving around. Has he ever done still life? Hello. <laughs> yeah. What do you think this is? <laughs> Travis Patrick for two dollars says you're all fake Frazettas. <laughs> oh boy, is nothing Everybody true. Is. <laughs> We're all frauds. You guys finally figured it out. It took you to the ninth to figure out that we're all uh, we're all frauds. We're we're the Fra Franzettas. That's yeah. Exactly. We're, we're, we're the Franzettas. We're the Franzettas. <laughs> uh, oh, sequential treasure says making friends and influencing people the Aaron Lopresti way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sinista says Bob Ross did it better. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> They're laying into us now. <laughs> We've got, uh, oh, actually, we're out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? Oh, we're having such a good time. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. So I'll give everybody five more minutes to kind of wrap up what they're doing. You know? Yeah, I'm virtually done. I don't think it's going to get much better uh, or any better or uh, good at all, uh, you know. <laughs> it's not going to get more Franzetta S. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. About as good as I can uh, do at this point. Maybe in another uh, 20, 30 years, I'll have it uh, figured out. <laughs> Actually, I've got something here in the last um, five minutes here. Let me go grab something out of my flat files because the guy was, you know, the guy that was saying that that we didn't, uh, we weren't getting the proportions right or whatever. I've got something a little bit more. Yeah, mine still kind of looks like normal woman. <laughs> Even though I worked on the the rump, it still looks kind of like... Uh, I draw like girl next door types. I don't know that I even draw like hot women. Uh, yes, you do. I guess it depends on what you like. I mean... Well... Like I'm not good at like... Um, you know, like a Jim Lee babe. That's like a more supermodel proportions. Like I, I, you know, I draw your like I draw your hot sister is what I draw. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna okay. Here's something I did many moons ago with the more the intent of sort of it looking more Frazetta like, uh, just in how I inked it. So let me go. Well, we're judging here. you on this piece, not something. No, exactly. I know, but that's I'm what just, I was going to say. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I, okay, here we go. Ooh. Wow. See, and again, there's a white ape kind of thing with, but it's a looser ink job. Yeah, what happened? You should have done that. 
Ah, that's beautiful. Really well done. Golly, Thank man. You. So, you know. I love that shadow. It's so good. That's I've been getting into that lately of doing the, like I used to just shadow every part, but now I'm trying to get into that where you just, just the head will drop a shadow across the whole dang body, you know, all the way down. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the Frazetta was obviously was was huge on, um, you know, black placement for mm -hmm. creating volume and stuff, and and leading your eye where, you know, he wanted you to look and not being distracted by stuff you didn't need to, to see. Right. And I could put I could put more black on this character, uh, especially this ape. Um, you know, I was just looking at mine, thinking maybe I could do that a little bit, um, but. Uh, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> I, I have this fear that, like, okay, now, now I'll mess it up. So, <laughs> well, you know, we've, you, like we always do. You know, we can always show up next week with something a little bit different. Go, oh, I worked on this a little bit this week, and then, <laughs> kind of turned out like this. And uh, all right, I usually, yeah. I usually never come back to a piece. I got lots of unfinished stuff in a drawer. <laughs> All righty. So let's take a look at Kelsey's. What uh, well, full screen Kelsey. There you go. So this is kind of the dark, dark wolf chick, right? Kind of from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was. Uh, yeah. Once you like, if you zoom in, you can see how rough all this is. It's more like a. Uh, what? It's a watercolor you? sketch. It's a it's a color yeah. sketch. Is what it is. That well, that's what this show is. We're not doing you know finished pieces. We don't have time. Who's that uh, European guy who worked on uh, Vamprella? One of those guys, Gonzalez or something. He does a lot of his comic work. You know, after that was like loose watercolor stuff. I really love that look. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jose Gonzalez. Yeah, it was like very Maybe, sketchy and stuff, but the yeah. drawing is so beautiful. Yeah, all those guys. I really dig the the looseness of that stuff. Um, I'll do my book like that if people let me get away with it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's something to be said because you've got that level of energy in the when the looser sketch drawing that you can lose by overworking something because you're yeah. so concerned about getting everything exactly right. And uh, I, I'm trying to adopt that more and more is to be looser because I just think that the, the drawings have more energy to them. Uh, Fritchie Snitchell says she's the one furry I like. Okay, good. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. The color's fantastic. That is a great piece. Look at how robust that buttocks is by uh, how you shaded it. <laughs> that's, it's uh, better. It's better. I got to yeah. work on my rumps. I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> uh, Random Mac Randerson says, if we had more boobs and more provo provocation, Kelsey might feel more like Milo Monero than Frazetta. Yeah. Yeah. Milo That's Monero true. is another guy who does the kind of looser watercolor style. I, I like that yeah. stuff. Yeah. If we, if we, if, if I, uh, if, if I'd let you go a little bit saucier, you could have been doing Monero. <laughs> and, uh... and then I'd definitely be able to sell this piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think someone will buy the booty. Um, <laughs> Uh, Grimstorm says, messed up. I wish I could mess up like you. <laughs> and then uh, Fotrius Pyrellus says, that's a nice butt. He just comes right out and says it. Okay, good. <laughs> Sword in Hand says, great stream. Uh, David, like Aaron's new drawing looks like sexy Johnny Quest. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> What? Hey, just just take it. Just take it in. I'll take it. Okay. Sexy, I'll, I'll go with it. Sexy Johnny Quest. Uh, throw in some Scott Campbell. Don't think uh, Manera had a huge problem selling his work. No, I don't think he did either. Yeah, I like Scott Campbell too. I, I definitely have a lot of that nine that image guy stuff in my stuff that's probably impossible to really get rid of fully. Um, but I don't mind. I like that kind of stuff. So. Henry Jeremick says, Aaron, can you please show us the death dealer drawing that you mentioned earlier? Thank you. All right. Oh, well, I'll grab man. it. Yeah, um, please. Okay. Well, Kelsey, this is no, I honestly, this is a really nice piece. Thank you. I would uh, put you solidly in third at this point. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I I'm think hoping for my coveted number two spot. That's usually, Dude, I think you're definitely locked in at at least three right now. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm grabbing my uh, death dealer piece because I did promise it. So I will. Okay, I'm uh, glad that's what you're grabbing. I'm worried. Hang on now. 
Hang on now. All right. So as Kelsey continues to mess with it because he just can't be happy. I can't. Um, I'm never happy. I'll eventually let it go when the show's over. <laughs> All right. Hey, while we got all you people here, please remember to like and subscribe. Um, helps the channel grow. And uh, oh, come on. Now my mouse is freaking out. <laughs> the show's going to blow up because I don't, uh, my mouse isn't working. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Here we go. Um, all right. Did her tail lift up to let that cloud out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks uh, yeah now now it's a whole another connotation here <laughs> uh -huh. okay so here's my contribution oh yeah beautiful good uh movement on that guy he's got a lot of movement he's a monkey it, yeah i like his fingers he's been, he's been working on it yeah you draw a real scary one man he's <laughs> yeah don't. You see them in the movie, and they're just like all nice. <laughs> Is that there the same go. one? Huh? What did you say, David? I said he was working on his crunches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my abs going. So I may throw some color on this. I really wanted to. That was my intent, but I didn't get there. So we just got to the inked version of our show. Um Snake Oiler says Deja Thora, she needs pasties. Well, this is the this is the better covered, the PG 13. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Killer nice, awesome. Thank you. Disney is watching. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean, you people? Mm. <laughs> First <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, Deja looks hot in the halter. Look up Gantz, Aaron. Get with the times, Gantz. I don't know what that means. Ooh. See, now, okay, here we go. Here's the guy that was, uh, he was on our case for our proportions and everything, but he says the hip and the legs of Deja Thoris are good. Oh. So I got the Frazetta, you know, lower half. So I'll take that as a win at this point. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me show you the death dealer that I did Um when I was just sketching in the evening for recreation, because I was afraid one of you guys would take the death dealer and I wouldn't get to do it. And then I changed my mind and decided to do this anyway. But there's the death dealer. And then none of did. us did a death dealer. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice. So maybe that has a little bit more Frazetta vibe to it for you guys. I don't know. Did you do that on gray paper? Yeah. Yeah, cool. That saved it. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, you know, it's loose, kind of fun, and uh... that's very cool. Yeah, I like that. I I never thought about messing with colored paper before. You should draw like that more often, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you draw sucky stuff when you can draw like? <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I re I love the roughness of it. I I, I think yeah. you. This is how you're doing. Is this kind of how you're doing? Uh, yeah. Your Break book? God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like if that. all this broken up stuff down here instead of solid black and just, you know, uh, just so it, it just got more energy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just throw, throw those lines in there like, it is yep. what it is. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I know you guys are pointing out my camera still sucks. I, I pointed that out at the beginning of the show. I have ordered a new one, but it has not arrived yet. So I'm kind of stuck with those banding lines and I apologize. But uh, yeah, so there's the death dealer that I did uh, last week just in the evening for, you know, a little bit of fun before bedtime. All right, David, uh, you're up. Let's see here. And what do you got? Let's see it. Oh, see, come on, get your focus, man. You got the, the, the watery <laughs> lens again. Yeah. You got to stop moving for like 20 minutes before we get a clear <laughs> image. Uh, <laughs> Let me see if I I'm trying to get him in and out here and see if I can the get that in and out. Yeah, the ah. old in and out. Looking good. Move it up. Can you untape it, David? And like move it closer to the camera and see if maybe it'll uh give us something. Now that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she looks great. Is she pointing at us? Kind of hard to tell. Yeah. 
She's gesturing yeah. at you. She's saying, you're next, Kelsey. All right. I call dibs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like yeah. how you got that like real sort of thin waist. You know how it tapers in like that? That's totally what Frazetta was doing on that. Uh... Did it clear up yet? Huh? Did it clear up yet? No. Yeah. Well, it's, it's coming and going. It's a little <laughs> bit better. We gotta do so. I think it's your internet, dude. We gotta fix your internet. I don't no, know how we're gonna do that. Well, yeah, it sure does. It only yeah. shows up on your screen, but you're um, the one hosting. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're the one hosting. Kristen Ronan says that looks fantastic, David. Nice. Oh, nice man. Nice says Jackie Daytona. Let's crowdfund David a proper camera. Geez, I know we're gonna have to. <laughs> Maybe is it? Oh, that's better. Don't touch it. There you go. By the way, it's nice. That's pretty good. Nice. Fantastic work, David. That's great. Fuzzy, but great. <laughs> <laughs> um, loving the narrow waist. Uh, let's see here. Where's her organs, says the feminist. <laughs> Snake oil. Where's her organs, feminist? Ask for Zeta. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So David actually probably more than any of us tried to kind of pick up that sort of Frazetta stylings yeah. Yeah. Uh, where Kelsey and I were just uh, trying our best. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, what do they call it? Fighting against the machine or struggling. Yeah. against her. I don't know. It was, um, yeah, there we go. Now it's clear. Yeah, that's nice. Johnny Comet, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Comet. Yeah, beautiful. Well done. Drawing nice for Phantom Prophet says, that's not too far from what Frazetta actually looked like way back when. Yep. Well, all right. So David actually finished a drawing, played by the rules, <laughs> and may have made us all look bad. Yeah, here we go. Bearwolf 13, David understood the assignment. <laughs> Boy, we're, we are taking some heat today, Kelsey. You and I. As you should. Bunch of haters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, that I don't understand nice. good Frazetta, whatever we're doing. Never yeah, mind. they don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand what really quality copying of Frazetta looks like. <laughs> um, this has like a, a Frazetta kind of uh, Busema thing going. Huh? Who, I me? said this has a Frazetta Busema you? thing going on. Oh yeah, the uh, the yeah Conan. That's what I was saying. I was like, just finish that one, and you probably use that one for this. Yeah, I was going to say, you finish that one, and you're done. <laughs> it is done. It is. Uh, I know it is done. I can't believe it. We're actually saying David's is finished. Like, what? Uh, <laughs> I would like to point out, though, that my monkey has four arms. So <laughs> uh -huh. that's insane. I mean, well, Kelsey wolf grew, has four legs. Yeah, but you can't really see all of them. And, and it's like the girl's got one arm and the other hand's kind of coming out there. So you really all you had to draw was two legs and a butt. You just got to look in between in between the nope. lines. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Right wait. Where is it? There. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Randa McRanderson says, I got to give it to Kelsey. Layout pose dot. Uh, Dat, oh, I see. Dat, Dat and coloring. Um, well, it's not a competition, so let's not be awarding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not first, second, or third place. It's just it's a friendly get together of, of video studio mates trying to, you know, trying to produce some good work. That's all it is. It's not a competition. Who likes mine best, though? Anybody in the chat would like to? <laughs> I'm going to do my own stream just so I can win every now and then. <laughs> yeah. now, wait a minute. There's no winning. It's oh, just. Right. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> hey, I do want to take a second here, though, uh, to point out that my mouse is still not working. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the um, uh There we go. Uh, that I do have a campaign running called Wraith of God Blood Hunters that you'll find a link to the description. Oh, let me try that again. You'll find a link to this campaign in the description of this video. Uh, today is the last day to order t-shirts. Okay. So if, um, if you want to get one of these uh, crazy, I'll show you real quick. Uh, so we scroll past all the 
wonderful artwork that is part of this. There we go. If you want like one of those groovy Dale Keown we bloody werewolf shirts or You're not Sharon, are you supposed to be Sharon? Sharon what? Share your screen. Oh, are you guys not seeing it? No. <laughs> okay, screen. that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and um, I'm, I can't look at I can't ape Frazetta. I can't um, work a basic internet thing. <laughs> I know my, my mouse isn't working. Uh, yeah, let's do a show. Just um, put it on the technical difficulties and we can try again. Yeah, that's right. Good. There it is. Um, this is the last day to get um, Ooh, your t shirt. Yeah. So if you want the uh, bloody werewolf uh, Keon shirt, or maybe the not so bloody garbage man shirt, or it comes in two colors. Or the uh, what we call now the classic Wraith of God shirt. These are going down tonight. What so is, this is your last chance to order is, those shirts. What's the Night of the Living Dead thing? What are all those up for? Just art? What is this? This? Yeah, what is that there for? That's okay, so well, I've got... Uh, I, it's There's a 51 page. Yes, 51 pages. Is this how it turned out? Wraith of God story, followed up by an 18-page Garbage Man story, which this is, colored by Dan Lawless. And then, and then, so this is part of the Garbage Man story, Night of the Living Jed. And, oh, um, Jed, okay. <laughs> that looks so good, man. There's Jed, it. thank you. And then uh, there's going to be 15 pages of Kit Carter episodes, which are kind of like Sunday strips, uh, but but formatted in comic book pages. So you have 15 pages of Kit Carter, which is my comedy sci-fi adventure strip. Oh, and it. then there's also another a nightclub story, which is uh, the characters that appeared in the Garbage Man trade paperback and also, also appeared in the first Wraith of God graphic novel. So the whole universe is starting to come together. So I have all these backup stories to sort of kind of place set uh, the, the Lopresti verse, if you will. So you get your Wraith of God story plus three count them three backup stories uh so it's quite the value awesome and of course there's four cover options bisley my wraparound cover the tales of suspense uh, throwback cover uh, featuring the backup stories on the front there and then of course the tomb of dracula number one tribute cover yeah. so all these are options for you or you can get all of them uh but I the t-shirts end to that tonight so if you want a t-shirt make sure you order today um also we've got um i'll do it right this time we're gonna go with um jaggy daytona says kit carter prince some of my favorites aaron sent me uh, a year or so back love me some kid i do too i really dig that that's a fun thing fun book well kit carter is gonna i'm gonna do a graphic novel after this i'm gonna take a, a probably a a short reprieve from uh Wraith of God and do the Kit Carter graphic novel that everybody wants and then get back to uh yeah. but anyway, here is David's campaign, Bass Reeves West of Hell. This is being put up by Allegiant Arts and uh written by Kevin Grievous, illustrated by our good friend David Williams. And um there's two cover options here. There's the David Williams wraparound cover right there that comes on the soft cover. And then if you want to go the full Monty and go hardcover, you get this great Andrew Robinson painted cover, mm -hmm. which is a wraparound on there. And I believe you have an option here to get Nora's Saga, which is Kelsey Shannon's book Yeah. on one of these or several of these perks. You got Bass plus the Nora hardcover. Um, of course, that's Nora's Saga. So... Yeah, check that campaign out. The link, of course, is in the description of this video. There's also a little reminder down there to go to Allegiant Arts to check out all things Kelsey and uh, letting you know that Kelsey is currently working on a Nexus story with Mar or Nexus comic or series or miniseries with two of uh, them. I'm working on two graphic novels. Uh, one's Ooh. 48 pages for Dark Horse, uh, which I'm uh, wrapping up. And then uh, we got the rest of uh, Nexus triplets, which the first issue came out uh, through crowdfunding, but we're going to finish the story and do the whole story in one book. So that's actually three issues worth. So that's wow. uh, 36 pages. How many, how many issues, how many pages is three issues? I forget. That would be about 60 some pages. Oh, okay. There you go. So that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of stuff. And it, it's some, it's some of my best stuff and it's, it's killer. It's really uh, intense. Because <laughs> well, uh, Mike, Mike Barron's the kind of guy that doesn't stretch one scene over 22 pages. He's a guy that fills 
every panel with a new scene. So it's chock <laughs> full of stuff. Could you show um, any of it? With, you know when that's eyes? coming out? Uh, no, nah, not yet. Uh, well, uh, man, they just told me the date, so I don't. Um, I'll share some of it soon. Uh, maybe next show I'll share some. I'll see if All I can. Right. I'm not. I, I'm real cautious about Dark Horse. I don't know what I'm allowed to share, so I need to ask them. But I'll share some. Ellie Munoz is saying Dale was on Mandy's show earlier today. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's going to come on our show. Uh, Mandy's got certain attributes that attract Dale that we. <laughs> Can't compete comes with on show. certain attributes. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> but Aaron's he's gone silent. Have I gone silent? There you are. Uh, okay. I saw you talking on the TV, but nothing was coming out. I forgot my mm. TV's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so it was your fault, not mine. Uh, yeah, Dan, yeah. Pizza man Genovese he says, doesn't matter when it comes out, I'll still buy it. There you go. He's talking, awesome. of course, about uh, your Nexus. Someone was Wait saying how cool it oh, is that, you, that you're working on Nexus. That's uh, with Mike Barron. That's pretty darn cool, dude. It's a it's a bucket list item of mine. It's one of my favorite comics. Uh, uh, you know, I've read almost all of them uh, since way way back since the the innovation day. Or was it innovation? It was first first mm -hmm. comics, I think. Yeah, the first yeah. innovation, all of that stuff. Yeah, so they've been. It's one of the oldest uh, creator owned comics out there right mm -hmm. Old, oldest i think it is yeah i think so i mean it was he was yeah. right at the forefront of when uh you know people were in the early 80s or even late mm -hmm. 70s you know like star reach and some of those were trying to do independent books mm -hmm. and you know that was right there so yep. Um, yeah, so it's a real thrill. I mean, at first I was like really because I'm I'm a huge fan of the dude, and uh, I'm like, man, I and I, it didn't. I started looking at Nexus long after when it was just him doing it, so I didn't realize that so many other people have had a stab at it, including some of my favorites. So uh, it really freed me up to kind of instead of trying to do like a dude thing, to just kind of do my own thing. So. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Very, very cool. All right, people, that's it. Um, once again, it looks like uh, everybody's fighting for second place behind me, but that's okay. <laughs> if we're not keeping track. No one's, you know, there's no winners or losers here. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's uh, Vera Frady said, Aaron went silent thinking of those attributes. It's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I think uh, I think look at that spider hand by David Williams. Yeah, it's freaking me out. <laughs> um, I think next week. So we, you guys kind of want to go sci-fi next week is what you're telling me. Give give the, the chat some sci-fi options. Yeah, and uh, maybe try something a little bit. Get away from the sword and sorcery that uh, uh, I've been hooked on here for a few weeks. Um, all right, so everybody, we had a big chat today. Again, thank you guys. We couldn't do this show if you weren't uh, showing up to watch, and we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we had as much as 180 people watching at any one time today, which is awesome. pretty darn good. We want to get this show up to over 200 viewers regularly, and um, we'll keep uh, providing you guys with entertaining and hopefully excellent art content uh, to keep you coming back for more. So uh, until next week, everybody, we will see you somewhere, either on social media or on YouTube, but uh, we'll be back at 1 o'clock on Wednesday next week for another exciting episode of Graybeard's Studio. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening, and we'll see you soon.